Hey everybody, it is Cinnamon Cooney, your art sherpa, and today we are going to be going at Lake Como again. I know we've got it this time. On the mic is my husband, John. Hi guys. He's going to help me show you how you can create this painting for yourself at home by following along with this step-by-step -step instruction. We're going to try to keep the energy up. We're going to try to keep the show fun so that you have everything that you need to make this for yourself because that's the goal. I know we've got people from all over. I kind of wanted to say hi to the community today and kick us off with, why don't you tell us where you currently are, what your favorite color is, and what your favorite animal is so we can all get to know each other a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Where you are, what your favorite color is, and what your favorite animal is. Because I think Ooh. you can tell a lot about a person if you know their favorite color and their favorite animal. I think that's like a much more important question to ask at a dinner party than like, what do you do for a living? <laughs> it doesn't tell me anything about anybody, but color and animal, I know all about them. So go ahead and give that a go. We're going to jump on in. I've got some wishes. We did wishes on uh, the uh, Saturday one, what we should try to do. Um, and so we're going to do some new ones today, keeping that positivity going out there. This is an eight by eight canvas. I've got it put on my little lazy suits <laughs> dj artist okay that's gonna be fun on my uh, next little tic tac reel i'm actually not doing that anymore i'm doing reels okay so ultramarine blue and halo blue are gonna be our starting colors i've got a number 26 bright and on the surface we have some wishes done in watercolor pencil i will kind of brush those out so that they disappear into the surface dana fuqua is wishing for some healing for her mom um, I'm wishing for a great painting for everyone, a painting breakthrough for somebody who needs it right now. So if you're hearing this and you're needing a painting breakthrough, I'm wishing that for you. Um, and then personally, on a personal note, I have a friend who's a doctor who's currently working at a dedicated COVID hospital and the conditions for the staff there are really scary and the support for the staff is really scary so i'm wishing that he gets home safely and healthy and that his uh family is safe and healthy once he's home mm. and safe and health for everybody who is volunteering at these hospitals they are doing 12 and 14 hour days for 14 days straight it's incredible what the health workers are doing to save lives just putting everything down and doing what needs to be done. And I'm amazed. I wish they were better taken care of, though. So that's my wish into the universe. You like that wish? I do. All right. So let's start painting this in. I'm going to take my brush. And I'm going to go ahead and brush all the little watercolor words. And that just kind of helps them disappear into the canvas. It also sort of helps break up any weird coatings that could be on your canvas. Because <laughs> it's supposed to just be gesso is what it should always just be. But guess what, guys? Sometimes it's something else. Like, I don't know. You know my theory, anti-mold theory. I'm going to take my cup. I'm going to drag off my extra water. And I'm going to go ahead and, oh, I love seeing all the stuff. You gonna, If anybody lets you know what colors they are while I'm painting in this blue, maybe we can read some of the colors, places, and favorite animals that our community is throwing up today, John, mm. while I'm painting in the blue. Because i got to be looking down. Let's see here. Oh, yeah, this is, I'm live painting it instead of the pre-recorded one. Other changes that have happened. Let's see here. I'm going to get the, get our little system going here so I can zoom in a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Just that I, I need, let folks see that. So the picture in picture isn't going to be there on the show. Every once in a while, I'm going to have John show it. Mm -hmm. um, so that you guys can see it again. We'll do the opening screen every once in a while so you guys can kind of get a sense of where we're going. You can also go by the website to the link in the description and uh, go ahead and print out the reference and just have it to the side. I think it's really helpful to do that. Ah, Tam Tam is from the Caribbean. Her favorite color is black, and she loves cats. Painting already in my head. Actually, that would be a fun art game. You tell me where you're from, favorite color, favorite animal, and I'll do a painting from it. All right, I'm fine. A There's a amped up today. Uh, There's a web. I'm trying to see. Uh, Bishaka. Mm -hmm. um, she said that uh, she was from San Jose, loves California, and mango, mango yellow is a color. Oh, favorite animal? Horse. <sighs> yeah. Your, your people. 
we're friends. <laughs> we would be good. I would speak to you at a dinner party. You keep going through those, and I'm going to dry this thing, and you stop okay, laughing at me silly. Let's see here. Miss see, Jennifer's from Mississippi. Her favorite color is silver and loves wolves and foxes. Yes, wolves and foxes. No, let's see here. Uh, Suzanne, I'm in Massachusetts, love purple, and a two-week-old donkey. Yes. Is it a donkey named Donkey? Because that's a good name for a donkey. You know, I'm just a old-fashioned donkey namer. So anyway, I, I like donkeys, especially since Trek. But my fondness for them was before that because I used to read a lot about history and they were very, very useful in the expansion of America and the West. And anyway, so not to fall down a donkey hole, but things happen. So, oh yeah, let's see who else is out here. Uh, do, 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 do. Great Britain, animal tiger, color green, Deborah. Wow. And Deborah's from uh, she, Great Britain. Favorite animal is tiger, and uh, favorite color is green. I was like, tiger caught my eye, because you know, because oh, I gotta mute you. You do do. There you go. Uh, okay. Um, is ah, where Warya Das is um, asks how long should you wait before varnishing um, a canvas? If you're gonna varnish, uh, if it's a smooth painting with not a lot of texture, I would say three days is a good wait. You can go longer with acrylic painting. You don't have to rush to varnishing. If it's really thick, you're gonna want to give it three weeks, four weeks. There's a lot of instruction on your varnish can. Number one tip I can give you to be successful is read the instructions on the varnish can and follow them exactly. If it says it's a temperature, make sure your place is that temperature. If it says no cat hair, the cat can't come in the room where he's gonna now wanna be forever because you're varnishing in there and where cats wanna be, where you told them they can't be because they're like that. Let's just acknowledge that that's how cats are. Mm -hmm. Where you're like, I would rather you not sit on my book. And that's where the cat's going to be all day. So today, because we're doing this live, I will go ahead and show you guys some tips and tricks about using the traceable. All right. So the trick with the traceable is however you print it out, sometimes our particular traceable upstairs tends to want to um, print out the traceable crooked. I don't know what that is. I tried straightening it out today, but could not. So I'm going to position this. <laughs> I think probably because the paper feed grabs it ever so slightly, ever so slightly. And tilts it. <laughs> All right. So what I'm doing is I'm making sure my water line is straight. That'll make sure the rest of the lines in my traceable are straight. I've trimmed it down a bit extra. Okay. I've trimmed you, it in so that I can tape it. Why are you going through the extra effort of making why are you going through the extra effort of making sure that your water line is square to the edge of the surface? The reason I'm going through the extra trouble to make sure that the water line is square to the surface is this is a very distant horizon water line so it will always be level and one of the first things that can throw your painting off from looking correctly is getting that distant horizon line of water when it's far away if it's a close embankment it might not do this but this is far enough away where it's going to be level now i'm taping this down with some low tack tape first and that helps me position it before putting in my Cero paper. Now, this is Cero paper, S-A-R-A-L. It is for artwork. It is water soluble. The trick to this, success with this is, your canvas needs to be fully dry, completely, and not warm. You want it cool and cured so that you're not pressing the pigment or lines into the canvas during the traceable process. That's just something you might not know if you're unfamiliar with the process. The see how there's kind of a dull side, bright side, dull side, bright side. We're going to put the bright side down of this company's papers, right? And they make uh, several colors. I prefer the yellow by far, the yellow and the uh, white. I am not as big of a fan of the blue and the red wow. because I found them to be super staining. Oh, what do you mean by staining? <sighs> they just didn't come up well. I, I just consistently had issues and I adjusted for technical problems on my part, which you should always do. Um, but it just kept coming up. So I was like, man, if it's going to just remain like this, uh, we're going to have to have a breakup. So we did. <laughs> we had a huge breakup. 
Now, I have a sharpened pencil here, and basically the idea of any transfer of an image is that you trace these outer contour lines, um, and then I'm, I'm going to just kind of give myself a little sense of where this bush is. I can come in and paint it back later. If you have trouble with this stuff, right, you can absolutely go around these specific lines. I'm sure this is here. There's a lot more information on this traceable than what I specifically need. And you'll see me sort of trace on the inside of my lines. And that is so that I've got lots of extra, extra room. Because I want it to make my trees and plants and things. Like I know I'm going to want some little upward stuff. And I might do this one here. And you can, I will be coming back as I'm painting maybe straightening up lines or things just because, you know, I don't want it to be crazy like that. So this will uh, help us, you know, in what we're doing. We are having some uh, trees removed right now by the coolest arborists in the world. They are actually really cool. Um, and so you might hear noises or things. It may be a noisy day. I'm going to go ahead and just sort of give a light trace out for the buildings. We'll get real specific with these in a little bit, but if we can get them in now, it's nice. You know, just go ahead and get them in now. Little, little suggestions of buildings will be helpful to you. Hopefully this is giving a good transfer. I can always lift a little bit and look, and yeah, it is doing a great job. And that's the other reason why we tape. You want to tape sometimes so that um, you don't have your traceable shifting on you because they can do that. If you have it loose, if you try to just trace over it loose, it'll just absolutely shift. The first time I did this, when we did the recorded one, I just was like, I don't know, going crazy. And I'm like, I'm just going to freehand all these buildings in. And that took a little bit longer. And our file size ended up getting really big. That created some technical challenges. And I thought, for my sweet stunt hands, my favorite person person, I would simplify things a little bit today in process so mm -hmm. that there wouldn't be as many technological challenges as we had. Things are look, look like they're doing okay here. Are they looking? Well, I mean, Everybody's we're not trying to run a large file through the world. Right? Yeah, How you guys doing? Here. All right. Oh, Cheryl Kidd says, England, turquoise giraffe. Do you not already know that Cheryl Kidd is just fun? Does that tell you how fun she okay. is? So this, England, turquoise giraffe. You're that, like the funnest person on your block, aren't you? Like everyone else is like, Cheryl. That's like the secret password <laughs> to a clandestine operation <laughs> safe house. It like is. you're going to go in there, you got to tip your hat up, and it's England giraffe. Turquoise giraffe. Turquoise. England, turquoise giraffe. And they're... And they would, then they would let you in. This is so awesome. Oh, uh, wait, I got I to gotta scroll down to where you go. Uh, I see that uh, uh, Ira Gupta would like us to know my name is Pahel, Pahel or Pahil. Hell or Pahil. I don't Hill? know. Hell. Hell? Uh, Hell? Uh. Mm. You know, I'm not good with American names. And because... American names have so many varieties, and American names generally are based on a, on names from other cultures, but have varied slightly in pronunciation. Well, what happens is like people would get here, and then there'd be some group of people already here. This happened to my family who yep. didn't like the new people who were here, and so you had to change your name. Yeah, I was. And so Oak we were jo Johannesson. Yep, and then you were then you became Johnson. Johnson. <laughs> and we went from Okunis to Coonies. Right. And. Yeah. It's just a, just a little bit of that weirdness that we but have going on. Every once in a while, I mispronounce some name like Joe. Like, and I'm Joa. He, he says he does. I don't know. What do you guys think? You think that's true? I don't think that's true. I think he does pretty good. I'm going to bring the embankment. I really wanted this to be kind of a, like the feeling of a walk. Uh, and less n like nonsense in front of it, less noise in front of it, so that you would feel like, oh, I could go there. 
Let's see how we did. Now, this is a good question. Oh, look at that. Beautiful transfer. So, uh, it's gorgeous, right? And then you can use this indefinitely. You just turn it every time you use it. So you're getting fresh yellow goodness. I'm going to dive right in here and try okay. it. So, uh, Gulf Af Afshan Jahim mm -hmm. ja Ben asks, can I do this in acrylic or watercolor? Yes. Okay. So will there be any difference in the watercolor working of it? Absolutely. Many, many differences. What I would totally suggest, and I don't mean this in a cheeky way at all, is that if you're very competent in watercolor and you're very confident in it, um, yeah, go for it. Always switch between mediums. If you're not really sure, just manage your expectations. And well, what yeah. I mean by that is that, um, it, you know, if you haven't painted watercolor ever before and you've also decided to switch mediums and you also don't have the same color palette, you have many challenges in front of you. So if you expect yourself to do your best painting ever, that's really not an unfair burden to put in front of yourself. But if you're like, hey, I just want to see how this is different and what this would be like, then that's fantastic. And I say, jump in and go for it. Yeah. And if, a lot of... Uh, I'm going to put out some titanium white, sir. And one of the things that you're fortunate, if you're in, uh, especially like India and the Middle East, I've noticed that the watercolors tend to be more like washes and a bit opaque from some of the viewers that, we, that they were talking just to oh, chat. Yeah. So you well, may and they have, may be gouaches. Yeah, and you may have better luck with those more gouache-like watercolors when following these lessons. Yeah, because you're not doing the transparent -y watercolor yeah. one. Let's yeah. grab a cat's tongue. I think that's what I did last time. So you could use a filbert, which is just rounded. The difference is a filbert doesn't have any point to it. You could use a braid. It's just whatever you can do in the sky. To feel fairly um, comfortable with it, you know. On the far right side, I will put a little of my ultramarine into my thalo blue. I'm going to get some white into it. I will be stronger on the thalo blue over here. And I'm going to just paint in. And remember, we paint our sky past where we know we're putting our trees. Um, if you're doing the green world with me right now, you've heard a lot about this. Painting, painting painting room for your trees to kind of peek around things. Peeking. Peeking. Trees be peeking. It's like squatching. Ooh. You can see that the blue is definitely, you know, registering as such over here. It's really nice. Going back with a little more thalo blue. I'm kind of doing a little feathered soft stroke here. You can kind of see it's like a little circular motion so that the edge of the brush kind of catches it and moves things as it's going. As I come over towards the left-hand side, I will lighten the color and I will also add more ultramarine. And look how I'm doing the little blend here. And what are you saying due to because we're squatching? Oh, because there's so much good tree action going Would on. Would you be a Sasquatch animal? An ultramarine Sasquatch? Ultramarine? Yeah. It makes it very difficult to be blendy in the forest. An ultramarine. It's not so bad. It's not What's your favorite color and your favorite animal? So he doesn't have to be in this universe. He's not hiding from poachers. He is safe and does not worry about his future or his family's future. He can just squatch around and everybody's cool of it. I can't go with Millennium Blue and Falcons, so I can have Millennium Falcon. You can do that. And what am I going to stop you? I'm going to say your with... wishes for color are not valid. And we'll say I'm from Gallifrey. Yeah, you, all right, John, Millennium Blue, favorite bird, Falcon, location, Gallifrey. <laughs> so now you know John really well, don't you? you that whole engagement told you a lot about John, more than you've ever known about him. I think we should do this regularly. Although it, it would have to be Sasquatch or, uh, mm, I could go with, You could go with, you could go sloth. your own Sl way. Giant, giant sloth is one of my favorites. Giant sloth is awesome. They don't have those anymore, though. No, but they did exist. They did exist, but they are gone now. They're gone now. Oh, Louis, uh, Louisa is from Australia, Melbourne, and... Um, 
I can I have one more question. Can we do this in A4 sized paper too? Yes, you absolutely can. I would say that your easiest space to resize. So what you'd have to do is you could resize vertically and just have more sky and a little more hill and not be overly stressed with the resize. Or you could come down and water and flowers too. Or yeah, if you if you do that corner fold over thing mm -hmm. where you touch the upper right hand corner over to a perfect fold, you can make a square real easily. And it's a perfect square that way. That's true. So that you could resize your A4 paper easily to a square. I'm going to take my all terrain and my phthalo blue. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and add some white to this. I'm on my brush. You could switch to a round now if you need to. I'm improving flow. And let's start to add some just distant little marks here. These are little, little marks. They're small. They're close together. It's nice that this other blue is underneath it. We want these to be as horizontal as they can be. Horizontal as they can be. We're peeking at what they're cutting down. It's very fascinating. Most fascinating people in the world. <laughs> just, just, you just haven't been anywhere until an arbor's reached into the earth and there's so much energy in the earth. You want to, can you eat my coffee, baby? Yeah, give me a reheat. So it's not a big um, change here. Look, guys, it's just about starting to get those levels in, those textures in. Every once in a while, you add a little more light color to it so it registers, and you're just back and forth, making sure that there's a sense of water here, the beginnings of a sense of water, the beginnings. Uh, Wing Wingister says, I'm so glad you're painting live cinnamon. I feel we get to know why you do what you do while painting better. However, I also want you to take care of yourself and keep healthy. Uh, Trisha was for real. Is it live today? It's live. You know, w the pre recorded shows do a couple of things for us. Sometimes they let us work out some technology challenges. Um, in this particular case, it was helping me take care of my health for a little short period of time. There'll be a follow up video all about that. And, and then also, as you can see, it helped us sort of resolve our kit, like what's happening here. The thing that we don't really have worked out, I think, is the picture in picture um, on this full palette. However, I think it's good. As long as you realize that you can download the picture, I'm still brushing back and forth. I'm just making sure that this area is well put together. Come along the edge of my embankment. I want a nice coverage. You want a nice coverage too, don't you? Of course you do. Just making sure that we're starting to seat that in. Get a little more white on there. Raise that value. Raise it up. Come back here on the toe of your round, your filbert, your bright. You're just making little marks. Little marks starting to rough up the water. Throw a little wind over it. Blow a little wind over it. They're liking this formatting. You? I think like that's that. Are you okay? There we go. So we're just. Just standing up over here. It's a subtle difference, but it makes, it's a big deal. It is. It's a big deal. So when we get that, I'm going to take this. Uh, Bree says, you made my artistic self come out of the box. I'm very glad, Bree. I'm going to sip my coffee for a second. <laughs> That's what I was doing. I was coming over to sip the coffee. Sip the coffee. Sip the coffee. Gonna, sip the coffee. We have such a cool new how, tree house out front. Is it's, it looking good? So. Are they doing that right now? Yeah. Because oh. as soon as they're done with that, then they're coming over and they're going to do the um, mm. two trees by the house. So excited. We have a big giant tree and we're getting rid of all the dead growth that's real low and it's going to create a play area underneath this big, massive hundred year old tree for the kids and us to be in. And we're kind of excited about it. Very excited. All right. So as this is going in and you've sipped your coffee, we're going to talk about the number 12 Princeton Round Blender. As I don't want you to feel like you have to go out and buy a brush to get an effect. Um, and my clouds will do this. You would want it to be fairly dry. You've just got to remember that these are much stiffer. They're much, much stiffer. So I like to use this softer one here and then get 
some of this where I need a stiffer sort of edge or a drier sort of edge. These are a nice combo together. But for this, if you can get a domed blender, right, that's soft, I do recommend it. But don't feel like any brush has to be in your life for you to, to be able to paint. I'm going to come here and let's very lightly start to put in a little cloud bank. I like those little curved strokes. And then if we need to blend things in, we can always come back, as you can see, with a little bit of white and blue. Building, building little distant clouds for this to feel like that bright day on Lake Como, right? That's what we're doing. A bright day on Lake Como. A trick that you can do also with these paintings, if you're having trouble with your paint drying out, you can put a humidifier next to your palette. You could uh, use a retarder like this uh, particular product, acrylic glazing liquid gloss. Okay, but this is an acrylic medium used to extend the working time of acrylic paints. So here's what, I can thin things down very transparent and it slows the drying of my paint. The other products called glazing liquids, not do that. They speed the drying time of your paint and it would be very confusing. So you want what that brand is making. I'm going to come here and again, make some very soft marks. You can see I'm blending in some soft clouds. I like to kind of feather them up as you guys well know about me. And hopefully about yourselves. Oh, Colleen Siegel, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. I think she's also making sure it works because last night in the Patreon Only Live, it doesn't because YouTube's like, no, it doesn't work for us this way. All right. Pulling this in here. Just making sure a bit and then let's come up here and I will add some up high fluffy little clouds coming in and maybe another little one here those are fun right just getting it into there oh wow all right so um Remember that uh, to check the list price of things, uh, not so much if you're shopping at like a big box store like Michael's where they, you know, they're national chain, but you know, when you're online and you're shopping at Amazon, make sure that the price of your art materials is the list price and no more. There's an automatic uh, algorithm on there that will raise uh, costs of things. Thank you, Bree. I so appreciate that. Teresa, you have asked me what an Egbert brush is used Thank for, you, and you've now posed a question that I've got to go find out. Okay, I, so I I'm was, not really sure. I did not want to have to ha have a. I did not want to have my impulsive, sarcastic response because I don't know what an Egbert brush is, and so I immediately went to the comic book. Oh, did you? <laughs> so I was like, but I'll well, look it up and I'll find out. I'll find out. I haven't painted with one. Filbert, yes. Egbert, no. It, it, so it's obviously not a tech support brush, <laughs> which is you know, what Egbert did. <laughs> the size of the canvas is eight by eight. So I just asked it what the size of the canvas was. And I see Patty Hoffman, um, you know, oh. Just brushing here, just brushing here, lightening it up, just creating those little spaces of clouds, right? That's what we're doing, taking a little time. We have the time, we have the time to make a nice cloudscape. Every time you paint clouds, sometimes they're a little bit different, aren't they? They come out just a, just a little bit different than, than they originally were. The air currents flow differently. Look at this little stroke. It's like a pull, pull, pull. And I'm, what I'm really doing here, guys, is shading and creating value you want edges of your clouds especially on a bright day that are quite white and then the rest of your clouds should be in a similar value to the sky color because that's what they shade out to they can be gray but this isn't the lighting for that type of day so even on these up high little wispy ones i'm going to make sure that there's a little value there 
There we go. Look at that. We've got some nice little clouds, I feel. Don't you feel, John? Yeah. I do feel. <gasps> Stephanie Williams, I see magical sticker hearts. <laughs> Thank you from the there magical sticker okay. hearts. I'm going to go up because uh, I saw another one from somebody else earlier. I'm going to sip some coffee Bree in a second before we get back some. into our reflections. And Colleen said, I love you, Sherpa. And let me scroll back up because we missed some super chat, man. Super chat is the sticker goods of goods on YouTubery. Uh, I'm wishing Gull's friend a happy birthday, and I'm also going to help, um, exactly, Krista Hanley says, what does Glaze do? There was some screaming in the background, and I couldn't hear it, so this is the product here. Golden Artist Colors, sometimes referred to by all of us art teachers as GAC, so don't let that throw you. Acrylic Glazing Liquid Gloss, and it'll stay on the bottle, acrylic medium used to extend the working time of paints. When you want something that's slowing down your drying time, you're looking for things that extend and retard the drying of the paint. So those are the terms that you use. There's wonderful directions. This is useful for creating glazes and increasing flow, leveling, and blendability of all golden acrylic colors. Now they say golden acrylic colors. Guess what? This will work on craft paint. It can leave its little shelf and go play with okay. the other paints. It's can, allowed. Don't tell them I said it, but it's true. Can I say something <laughs> yeah. just personal about Golden? Mm -hmm. It is one of the chemically best resolved paints out there. I mean, they have true chemists that work with them. I'm not saying that other guys don't do wonderful work. I just would like to shine a light and praise <laughs> how awesome Golden is because they make their stuff work with everything. Like, they do. It's a bulletproof chemistry, and it it's really good. may not good. say it on the bottle, though. It, yeah, they don't claim what this They don't is. encourage it. It but, just does But work. what I'm going to sell you is what they don't, and that stuff is the best of the best of the, the best. best. Be, feel free to get it and use it because it will help you and does good stuff all the time. And, uh... So, you know, I, I, I mean, like, Literally, I've had a personally a chance to see their lab, to see the work that they do. If you just go read the uh, Just Paint blogs, you can see how serious they are about the chemistry here. And for sure, big praise. They make a good product. Super true. I see two more super chats. Thank you, Trisha Wiz, and thank you, Miller Miller. I'm so glad I make your life a happier place, and I love my pair. Jots Ahaj. Jots Ahaj. I think that is correct. Um, was asking, I was making a request for a painting. So if you have a topic or a subject that you would like to have painted, um, the best way to get that into my little uh, log, I keep a log of what you guys ask for, is to go to support at theartsherpa.com and you know you can send pictures, give a suggestion of what you're looking for, and you never know if another if enough people are asking for that, you will get it too. I just dropped my rag. Oh, I'll get you it. And what I'm going to do, because I have to go get... I do not love that. All right, let's make some more reflections, guys. Okay. Back into our cat's tongue. Sir. Before you get into that... Oh, before I I'm get gonna, into it. Yeah, while you're getting your thing, I'm going to run and get the guy, the guys a tarp, and I'm going to say thank you to Trish Woods, and thank you to Miller Miller, and all the people out here that are giving us wonderful Super Chat support. Uh, Saran, the lockdown special, wants to know where we live. In We, need, we live near Gallifrey, just off of Neverland. Just off of Neverland. So that's where we if are. You, if you close your eyes and tap your feet three times and paint with us, you'll be here. That's where we are. That's where we are. And you're welcome to come to. It's also I'm called Pennsylvania. <laughs> it's also called Pennsylvania. It's also <laughs> called Pennsylvania. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get water on my brush. Teresa M. asks if I have tried the Utric or Liquitex cadmium-free paints. Okay, so cadmium-free paints are just cadmium hue. It's just a new way of naming it, but it is an absolute, consistent, historic little product in the paint world. I have tried Utric. I have tried Liquitex. Utric has always been able to nail that sort of cadmium hue look. Um, Liquitex used to have a cadmium hue that was just terrible and they rebranded it and that was their cadmium free. The positive of it is it's a very close shade. I can definitely tell the difference, but it's very close. Um, at best, th they've done a industry level job, the industry, what you would expect them to do for that. Um, it is a dollar more than the golden hue 
which in hue was honestly a little bit better. And I just looked at everything. I just looked at everything. If you're worried about moving away from cadmiums, anything that says hue doesn't have any cadmium in it. And now they've added this new marketing word, cadmium free, which is also hue. So hue doesn't have the actual pigment. So uh, both really good products. Uh, both are vibrant. Both are consistent. And you can paint with them feeling fairly assured you'll get something good out of it. Thank you, Trisha. Your generosity is so deeply appreciate all you share and make my art journey easier and feel fun. <sighs> oh, she's like, I'm having to do it in spot. I'm going to come here. I've made a much lighter color and I'm going to come on the toe of my brush. I'm going to just make little marks. Just, just go ahead and take the time. You make little kind of little highlight marks along this little distant world. There's so many um, kind of like lighten up lighten down and we're going to be doing sparkles and different things here so just enjoy what you're doing i'm coming along in the edge you could use a round to do this you can see these are short little marks they do tend to be horizontal you know is what i want to do and i am trying to make them uneven absolutely Aww. Thank you, Sundar. You're such a barbarian, and I will decline your invitation, sir, while my moderator show you the door. <laughs> Just, uh, people have been locked in inside too long. So sometimes you guys will let, you'll see me actually respond. Oh, Patty Hoffman, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, you'll see me respond to the hecklers and trolls that will come in sometimes during the lives. And you may wonder why I even do that. And that's just to let you guys know everybody gets heckled when they paint. And when you're really new to painting, that can be shocking and disarming and super upsetting. When you've been here a minute, it's just noise that somebody's making. Just, just the wind in my hair. Thank you, Trisha. I truly love the paintings of landscapes. They feel so serene to me. It feels serene to me too. Can you guys see the little bit where we're just coming in and creating these little highlights, these little bits in the water and how we're just taking our time? This is, you know, we can go fast, we can go slow, but the point is try to make these as interesting visually as you can. I also like to check them kind of upright. And we're gonna have to come back with a deep water color as well because it isn't just the highlights in water that you paint. They're also shadows. They're super important. Just coming along. Yeah, never worry. When people make critical comments about your art, it's all about them. And never, ever, ever about you. Right? Informed people when they talk about art will tend to avoid criticism, especially very subjective criticism, because they understand they're they're aware that that's not relative to what you're doing. But everybody's an art critic, so they will all come way in. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm okay, I promise. Ah, you're so welcome, Das. I'm absolutely happy to do that. Um, ah, I see so many people. Listen, I love that so many people from all over the world are able to join us today because we're on a little bit earlier and that lets some people catch us. That lets some people catch us. I may move up my time on uh, Saturday too. So I like this a bit, but it is nice to be able to have lunch. Let's see how we got that little corridor in. It's just a little corridor. You're just getting in a corridor. Get your corridor in. Now I'm going to take a bit of my ultramarine and my phthalo green, and this is going to make my deepest watercolor. You can add some phthalo blue to it. Come back through. And add some shadows. These are very small. Remember the marks that are far away tend to be smaller than the marks that are up close. So I'm just trying to pay attention to that and be aware of it. There's also a lot of green in this water, along with the blue of the, the sky that's reflected above because there's so many trees around everything. 
Uh, Teresa Purdue, are we allowed to sell the painting we do on your tutorials on Etsy? If you're going to sell my artwork on Etsy, on America Fine Art, any of those places, we ask that you, one, don't make prints or reproductions, no mechanical reproductions, uh, but a hand painting is fine, like things that you hand paint. And we ask that you credit us. So you would put a byline like uh, inspiration by the art from, you know, the Art Sherpa the, yeah. and something back to the YouTube channel. And then we don't mind it at all. Be sure to always ask any artist, uh, any art teacher um, that you're painting with if they're okay with that. Because every art teacher has a very different response. Can you guys see how we're weaving in this like shadow of the water? I hear, I hear, did something come in the so, mail? So, yeah, some, it's been pretty exciting outside. So the guys went <laughs> around side, the uh, other side, uh -huh. and found that there was a tree that has a whole bunch of internal rot, and it's been, it's hollow. Really? And, and he could see all the way up, like probably oh, wow. 100 foot in the air, there are these three shelf mushrooms growing on it. And he's like, so if you look, that's an indication that this is hollow and a good breeze is going to blow this whole thing over into the house. And when you look at it, it's leaning over. Uh oh. So like if it did break and fall, it would definitely break and fall into the house. Man, so, shout out to the arborists out there. It is such a cool service and a cool job. That was Paul on Alan's team. He oh, was yeah. awesome. Yeah, we are working with some really great guys and we're super appreciative. You see, I am just brushing out some of these darker values, and I'm leaving some of the lighter value here. This is how we start to build up and weave some of these reflections that are going to make this water feel so very, very real. So very, very real. Are you guys liking this? Ooh. Did we send out a text? Yeah, I'm not sure if it if the, there's an issue with the text thing, but I'm going to scroll back up here because, man, I missed some stuff. <laughs> you I'm catch gonna, what you missed. I'm so, going to put out some burnt sienna. Can I yeah. read some messages to you? You read some messages, and I'm going to put out some paint, and then we'll tell them what colors we put out. So Trish said uh, she, gen she had just sent some super chats over here and said, your generosity is so deeply appreciated and all that you share to make my art journey easier and feel fun. And thank you. So thank you, Trish. And thank you, Patty. Oh my gosh. And thank you, Patty, again. And, and, tr and Trish says, I truly love these paintings and landscapes. They feel so serene to me. Aren't they wow. fun? And then again, Trish says, uh, I'm so glad you're taking care of yourself. And I also appreciate how you, would, how you adjust to keep painting. I feel it's so practical and such a good example for all of us. With a big happily face. Oh, and thank you so much. And thank you Woo! for all those. And then uh, Teresa says, let's see here. She, you, you already answered Teresa's questions about that. Oh, your, your mom says the gnome never came. Hmm, I'll go back and Anybody check Anybody get their gnomes? There was, the gnomes were, there were some issues on that gnome site, so I'll have to go back and check it out. <sighs> Sometimes the gnomes get punchy. They do. <laughs> they, in, you know, it's, <laughs> it's gnomish games. <laughs> yes. I'm going to take a little bit of my ultramarine blue and my uh, burnt sienna. Together, these make a really fantastic gray. I'm going to mix this a little more blue than to the gray. Add a bit of my zinc. And I'm going to come here. This is, again, with the number 12 Princeton Round Blender. And I'm going to just very lightly come here and using the brush, and letting the shape of the brush, and I'm kind of pouncing and tapping out, create this hill line. It's a, this is a distant hill line that we have kind of going here. The distant hill line, it's far away. It's going to be a little grayed out and almost blue. And that's because things in the distance tend to do that. That's part of atmospheric perspective, is, is that the further objects are away from us, they tend to desaturate. The colors get less vibrant. And they become sometimes much lighter. I'm just painting around this, just making sure that that's there. Getting that kind of in. Sometimes you can add a little green into the mix. Right? It's still pretty muted. Still pretty blue. And so I'm going to take that and you can kind of see I'm sort of roughing up my brush here. Go tap, 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 tap. start to uh, work in some of the little shaping and shrubberies. 
It, I have to have my microphone down to say shrubbery. So I was really blessed. I grew up a bit in California. So some of these colors and values are very familiar to me. Mm -hmm. And I very much like them. Again, making this distant little grayed out hill. See how the, the hill is just so distant and so grayed out. And we'll come back and add some more shocking contrast. This is, this is the beginning. The beginning. Uh, Art Thomas says that he loves the style of artwork and thanks for the diversity in your tutorials. Guys, thank you for creating a situation where I had to be diverse. There comes a thing in most artist journeys, it certainly happened to me, where you're supposed to find your voice and you find a style and then you find that and then you just get stuck in that gear for a while. And one of the wonderful side effects of being a teacher online is that I didn't get to do that. I had to keep diversifying and keep like, trying to meet the needs of my community and it has made me a stronger artist a better artist a broader artist i face things that honestly uh 15 years ago if you'd have been like hey i need you to paint a car i'd have been like yeah this is my friend who's really good at cars <laughs> they'll do it for you and now i would be like yeah okay i can handle that that could be cool we could do that it could be all right and that's new and that's because of them yep i'm gonna get a little of my green and my burnt sienna together this is going to make a very very dark green very 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 dark green and i'm gonna come along and start to put in my hillside with this brush and notice that i'm trying to make uneven little shapes these uneven little shapes help make it seem like there are trees I like to make sure that this brush, when I tap it down, or any brush, if you were using like a, gosh, like a number two Cambridge, um, any scruffy brush that you were using for this, I just like to make sure that there's a rough edge to all of it. So that we begin the hard work of creating plants in the distance. Oh, Trisha, you are so kind today. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much, Trish. This is like landscapes. <laughs> really appreciate it. <laughs> and and today, the the, uh, the all of the support you guys, we just I can't tell you how much I appreciate being able to be here to do this with you guys, and it's the support of you guys that make it technically possible for us to do this. So thank you. Yeah. Because it really does make a big difference in, um, like, that we can be relaxed about getting new equipment. Like, I think there's a new lens on here. I mean, I can see that it looks much better mm -hmm. and is much more in focus. And, you know, you can really zoom in, can't you, babe? Oh, yeah. You want to you show them some of their zoom that they don't even know that is zooming? Zooming? Well, you know, anytime we need to, we can zoom in. But that's what we have zoom for. I'm just adding a little bit of this down here because I know I'm going to have this little guy here, but I just want to make sure I'm around this little bit and some of these little plants that kind of kind of came over the water's edge. Boom. We have the beginning of that and then go ahead and take, you know, this and I like to, well, when I did these, well, I just made sure I started with some dark green and then yeah. I came back and I leaved it. I was it. too zoomed. You were too zoomed? Look at that zoom zoomed. though. Look at that. <gasps> oh man, that looks so much better. That's a new lens. Okay, so it doesn't feel fuzzy to you now? It doesn't feel fuzzy to me now. It looks really good. And now I'm like not paying attention to my painting because I'm enjoying like, I'm like, ooh, the brush is just, you can see its bristles. Do you guys feel like you're in it enough? So, in that brush? Are you in that little brush? I'm in the brush in. Sorry, that's not is, what I'm supposed to do. That's not a technique. That's just me being goofy. This is the advantage of a 4K camera. We don't broadcast in 4K because it's just be ridiculous. I guess we could. Uh, Debbie Mitchell uh, asks, I got to ask a question because sadly having a disagreement with another artist regarding blending. When using your finger across a painting in acrylic, which removes most of the color but leaves a soft tone. But what's the disagreement? Are you... Depending on how you use your finger would determine whether it would be added. Can you refine that question a little bit for me, Debbie? Because um, I get that you're having a disagreement. And I'll say right now, my first advice is don't 
try not to get sucked into disagreements with other artists because the reality of it is there's a lot of techniques to get things done. And as long as nobody's endangering their life, then I do, I will weigh in. If I, if I look over and a baby artist is over, there going to give themselves cancer because they got a torch on their acrylic. I am going to say yeah. something short of personal health. There's really right. not a wrong way, but, but there are some factual technique information. Sure. So if yeah. you've got more information on that, um, Oh, Linda, I guess answered it. But if you, I would love to answer it online because now I've said it out loud uh, to the to the thing. What did your mom say? I'm just curious now. Are you curious? I have no idea. You know, a lot of artists use fingers in their painting, and they'll use fingers in the blending of a painting um, because the pads of your fingers are are soft and and smudgy, and if the acrylic paint is wet, you can kind of move it around. Um, you know, so that's you, not an unheard of thing. You had the teacher in college who t uh, painted with her toes. Yes. Her feet. Soul Sister Johnson, yes. She And her work was really, really good. It was quite good. And and you're like, and then they're like, and she, she was not a feet. fan of me, but she was quite good. Yeah, she was. She was. <laughs> I was a fan of her. <laughs> she was a very good artist. Um, so again, if you can catch what uh, Debbie's asking, because I'd love to answer that. Because, and again, to talk about, like, to give you an alternate on how to get out of that argument situation, the debate with the other artist, into an understanding of technique and process. Because believe you, I have been standing in a group show or community situation where somebody has a very strong personality and they are super opinionated and they really have a thought in their head. And they want to come at you like that can be a challenging situation for you as an artist. I have some strategies that are very effective. I do. Okay. Okay. Here's the question. It just fell across two different things. When using your finger across a painting in acrylic, which removes most of the color, but leaves a soft tone, isn't that blending? Yeah. It's a type of blending. Anytime of you create a visual transition <laughs> that is, is, is diffused, across one space to another and there's many ways to blend it's still blending hmm. you can blend using dry brushing weirdly enough you can blend using glazing weirdly enough or you can blend wet into wet but wet into wet is not the only way to blend and you can use any tool to do it and you should monitor your msds to make sure you're safe to use whatever paint you're using with your fingers or toes or nose or elbows whatever you're using to paint with just make sure you follow the safety instructions so that like cadmium paints or paints that might be like lead white, you certainly have to be very careful. So read the manufacturer's safety when doing any of those. We've standard, got a bunch of messages retracted in. Um, standard disclaimers apply. Uh, I think some folks uh, Okay. just looking. So I'm going to continue to highlight over here. <laughs> I'm going to take a bit of my ultramarine blue and... Uh, a lot more of my phthalo green and some of my cad yellow. Let me get this. This is going to be sort of a distant highlight that I'm going to get. And I'm going to then add the, the zinc into it. And you can see that gives me a bit of a highlight. And I'm going to come here and along the top of this hill, I'm going to tap up and down. And we're going to create more with yellow, I would say, than with white. A sort of distant value change, a distant highlight. And I'm tapping the brush in, and when I tap it in, what I'm looking to do is create distinctive zones. Zones. Zones of light and dark value changes. So hmm. that you get the sense of, oh, well, that, that's like a tree, or that's like a bush, or that's a something, without putting you in the position where it's got to be. Because you don't want to lose the the beauty and and effect of that distant distant space. Thank you for putting up with my follow up questions, mm -hmm. Debbie. Sometimes I'm like, I don't know what I mean. So when you're in an uh, argument with an artist who has a very strong opinion, right, um, about a technique, I really suggest, and if you never looked this up, nonviolent communication <laughs> strategies. They're fantastic. Uh, 
because it's really about processing what they're trying to say and the message with the message. And so when you, when you go back, right, you're finding out what construct it is that they're coming at you with. So they'll be like, the only way to frame something for shows is strip framing. Anything else is just terrible, right? Mm. And you can be like, oh, well, I hear you feel really strongly about that type of framing. How did you come to that feeling? So just get them talking about their experience. You don't have to change what you're doing, nor do you have to ever justify your process or technique, right? You don't have to do that in any way. Mostly, they just are trying to be heard. And I don't know, they have picked you to be that oh. sounding board. So if okay. you can kind of step back out of that moment and be like, you know, tell me more why you've come to that feeling, you know, like, oh, well, I was in all these shows and this guy did this. And you'd be like, oh, yeah, that juror is really tough. He's really strict on that. I noticed over here at this other place, they really like this type of framing and hang. Have you noticed that? And then you get them out of that rigid thinking. And, but you don't do it by saying, no, you're wrong. It's, it's this. You just, just try not to come at them with, no, you're wrong, even though they may be totally wrong. <laughs> come at it sideways. Like, grab step and be like, tell me more about okay. how you got that. Yes, baby. So Inder Kumar has a good question. Okay. How do you paint in one tone when, if you're adding water to your paint, it's changing tone? I think that uh, they're working with a paint when, because uh, the specific question is how to paint in one tone, because if I add some water, it becomes too light and then looks so untidy. So I believe they're probably using a product that's, um, the pigmentation is, is so- bit light yeah it's a bit light so it inder kumar i might suggest that you use a, a product that's like a uh, golden glazing liquid uh, yeah it, or... it, it may be that your product is very under pigmented and when you're applying the water to it it is revealing that quality of the paint and i would suggest if you're seeing that to uh you may have to do several coats to get a uniform field mm -hmm. of color you know, it just, it just may be something well, that's necessary. I have to make sure. oh, adding I'm, I'm some highlights to these trees Sorry, here for just a second. I don't want to take away all my dark shadows, right? I'm just coming in and beginning to talk about maybe some places, maybe some things that uh, there's a little highlight to the leaves that we're, we're enjoying that we, we appreciate a bit coming down here. I have so many screens that I forget sometimes to pay attention to which one. Which one? Which one do I need to pay attention Which to? Which one do I need to pay attention to? All right. Uh, now I'm going to come here and add a little bit of brown into my phthalo green. Da -da 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 -da. So, have you ever done any mixed media art? I have done a lot of mixed media art. What? So, what would you? What would actually is the definition of mixed media art anyway? Well, it, anytime you use more than one type of art material, if you were to do acrylic and watercolor, it'd be mixed media. If oh. you were to apply a collage technique, it would be mixed media. If you were to go out and get dirt from your garden and grind it into the paint, it could technically be mixed media. A mixed media is where instead of just painting with a single medium you incorporate several different medias into your process. Um, generally, it's, it's noticeable. <laughs> Most artists tend to lean into it, but it can be a lot of things. I'm just adding some deep values here into the forest so that when we add our highlights, we can okay. really see them. You can totally help Lori here, I can tell. Okay. All right, so Lori says, currently I'm experimenting with using watercolor and oil pastel and colored pencil in one piece. It's been an interesting experience. Could you help shed some light on watercolor, why? oil pastel, and colored pencil? Yes, there's a there's an order of important operation there. <laughs> yeah, so the oil pastels will work as a resist. Anywhere the oil pastel is, the colored pencil and the watercolor will not take there. So whenever you're thinking about how you're layering in those medias, right? The oil pastel will go over everything easily, right? It will color over everything. But if you put it on first, then everywhere that is, the watercolor will only fill in the spaces that the oil pastel is not and around it, right? So if you're trying to get a watercolor effect and then some hard edges from your oil pastel or pencils, you would want to go watercolor, pencil, oil pastel, 
if you're trying to create a resist where the watercolor goes into all these nooks and crannies in an interesting way, you would go old pastel watercolor, but you'd have to reserve where you want pencil because the pencil really will only go over where the watercolor is. Huh. So interesting fun facts. Let's, let's look at what else we've got going on. So I'm going to put out some CAD, CAD red. I like me some CAD red and I'm going to put out some yellow ochre, my friends. Yellow ochre. Let's put out some yellow ochre, also known as yellow oxide. Uh, they are not the same pigment, but they are the same hue. In other words, they're the same color. They just are different uh, pigment. I've got titanium white and zinc white. I've got glazing medium. So let's just go over the palette again in case. We've got cad red. We've got cad yellow, thalo green, ultramarine blue, thalo blue, uh, titanium white, yellow ochre, burnt sienna, and that zinc white. So we've got those things there. Let's start painting in our structures. I recommend getting a nice, small, sharp edged break. And the reason I'm doing that is when you're working around buildings, this one is rather nice. This is a number six Raphael Textura. It's got a nice sharp edge to it. So I'm going to be able to get some buildings and some of this stuff in really easily. I'm going to come in and do my gray here, which is my ultramarine and my burnt sienna. Ultramarine and cad red makes a pretty nice gray too. They're all pretty good. Mm. Okay, so scrolling up here, there's I'm a good gonna, question that came in. Kind of, this and, is my sidewalk color, and I'm trying to incorporate it. And I'm going to come along here. Oh, yeah. The beginning of the sidewalk. So, Nanny. Has a really good question. Nanny it's, has a good question. I want to answer Nanny's question. So I said, I told Nanny to grab a cup of coffee, cup of coffee, and then I'd ask you the next chance I could. So here we go. I need a cup of coffee. Do you? I drank it all. It's, oh my. <laughs> so, oh my. Oh my. Let's George Takai that. Oh, oh my. my. All right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but see, I have to at the very end, like, just do the, you know, the all right, you know, so. <laughs> Goodness. Okay. You're so funny. I'm going to take some yellow ochre and some cad yellow together. And I'm going to add a bit of this gray color to it to knock it back. You keep telling me what you've All got right. going on. So Nanny, Nanny asks, what do you do when you're depressed, no energy, and lose all interest in painting? There's nothing there. Now, you've, done, you've started the right place, Nanny. You've come to the Art Sherpa. And you've done the second most important thing, perhaps, and that's to start with a cup of coffee. Because, you know, that will provide some energy. Not a whole lot, but at least a cup full. All right. Um, so my first thing is, is if you've had an emotional swing, especially with everything that's going on right now, that's that, that is very significant and it's impacting the things that you enjoy, I really do recommend talking to somebody as step one, right? Because just like um, I recently had to go to the ER because I had heart stuff going on, sometimes you don't want to shake things off. You do want to go talk to a doctor just to make sure that you're okay. Um, if you can't get out there or there's budget stuff, um, I can personally recommend BetterHelp.com. Online sponsorship. counselors. Yep, online yeah. counselors are awesome. It's it's really helpful, and just know that you deserve that. That you deserve well being, and you deserve to feel okay. Um, the next thing is I highly recommend coming in and hanging out with your creative friends because sometimes you can just get out of the rhythm of being creative. You can get out of the energy of it. And by talking to your creative friends, they can kind of, by almost like peer pressure, pull you back in to that fun spark. Sometimes it's nice to take up a new medium or something that you don't already have, you know, like a uh, process with. I also saw, um, I was asked, have I tried digital art, says Jennifer Chavez. Yes, I have. I do it a lot. I like it. I you like know. it. And do I have a favorite coffee? Starbucks. I'm going to own it. It's true. It's Starbucks. I'll I'm going to go through and do my orangey buildings and my yellowy buildings. Let's keep going in our yellowy buildings, shall we? Yeah. Okay. And for Nanny. a little Bert Sienna to this one. It's important. What you're doing is the right thing. Is you got to look where you want to go. Because... It's real easy to get caught up and then to, to find acceptance that you're having a hard time. But if you keep looking to have a better time, you'll find it. So 
if that's you look for happiness, you look for painting support, you look to move the direction you want to be. So it's a little abstract, but I think that you're doing the right thing by asking the question and moving towards the answer. I think it's very important to do. Um, you know, it, it's easy to have like your mental health get kind of, kind of have it kicked over. I'm adding a little yellow and white into this part. And it's just know that it's okay to talk to friends, to talk to family and get to get help. Because if you know you feel differently than you normally do, right? Like it is okay to be like, Hey, I'd like to feel better. Mm. Super. All right. This one is also sort of a bright yellow. So these, all the buildings here are quite cheerful and we've got to kind of get in there their front faces and their side faces in. I like a brush like this because it helps me keep my little edges straight because with the buildings, it's really about that. I'm just trying to keep my little edges straight. Keep my edges straight. Keep my edges straight. Now, a really fun fact is I'm going to go a little darker on my yellow here, kind of to this space. There'll be um, plants and things in certain spaces. So, you know, you don't have to worry about that. I'm grabbing a red and yellow, and these are going to be kind of my orange buildings. Front of the buildings are the lightest, side of the buildings are the darkest, and we're going to be glazing and doing some shading techniques and different things to feel like we've got a hand oh. on it. <laughs> yes. So he was like, uh, can you, or she, not sure. Yes, mm -hmm. could go either way. Uh, can you ask Sherpa about a Frida Kahlo, please? And well, about Frida Kahlo? Well, I think, uh, well, she's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's she is a, the queen, if her only... majesty herself. So, about man, that's a that's like a I know she likes her. We have a whole bunch of Frida art like scattered throughout the house. Uh, you can't go to art school and not get sucked into oh, Frida, man. you there really can't. You know, she had, I, I've actually posted about her, post about her periodically, because I think if you have any chronic health issues, any chronic pain, Frida is an artist for which you should familiarize yourself. Oh, there's a good question. I'm not mm -hmm. sure. So Gus probably had a, a full question that did got, uh, it didn't get all in one thing. So can you ask Sherpa about Frida Kahlo and if she drew before she painted her portraits, please? You draw your portrait, your portraits before you. No, I think them? she's asking if Frida drew before she started her portraits. Oh. Um. I don't have a specific bit of information on that, but I assume uh, that she would have come into different art mediums as she was going. I'm going to add a little bit of ultramarine to this. Oh, did yeah. I guess was like that. Did Frida did Frida draw before she painted? You don't remember. It, it, no, it, and I think what it is is she became unwell. She was in her accident, and she was in her chronic pain. And being creative and art began to be how she came out. I know there are drawings by Frida, but I don't, and I assume that there are some that have to predate the painting. Because think about it. Generally, you start doodling, and then you're like, yeah. you know what would be nice is to paint. But again, you know, she's married to uh, Rivera and they had art in their life and their, in their community. I don't have a specific thing, but I want to find out now. We'll go back and look. I want to find out. Let's keep painting buildings while we're thinking about finding out. So as we're going forward, some of these will be a little more red and I'm going to take a little bit of my burnt sienna into my cad red to start out, kind of knocking it back and muting it a titch a titch just paint in tidily i'm not speeding through this painting because there's just a lot of fussy bits guys mm. and sometimes you have to slow down and enjoy the fussy bits stephanie had a very I, i'm i'm a very a very relatable experience to finding the sherpa Mm. So she says, uh, I'll say, uh, when I went through a hard time and I was an outpatient program, I discovered cinnamon and I have been pillless and, and uh, pillless antidepressant forever grateful. 
Thank you. Oh, and, I'm really appreciative to be any part of that. Yeah, thank you, Stephanie. We really appreciate you being part of our community too. We are stronger together. We really are. I'm going to add a little bit. This is my distant house. This person has moved up away from their neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm in the hill. You can't see me. You can't see me. <laughs> and make a little bit of an orange here, but it's going to be a bit muted. A bit. A bit muted. A bit which muted. Which is why I didn't really rinse out my brush. And that's just because I want to kind of come here and... I got this going. And now getting the rest of them in, which are in the variants of sort of white and blue. So it's always kind of an interesting thing here because I've got to, you've got to knock it back. You've got to shade it out, but trying to create a nice balance in the village mm -hmm. of different colored houses. Little you could get pretty, um, you get pretty creative with it too. Tacky. All on the hillside. On the hillside. And they all look just the same. Little houses on the hillside. Just continuing on. I'm going to do another like little blue house up here. So sometimes the stucco will have a bit of a blue cast to it. And sometimes the stucco will have a bit of a yellow ochre cast to it. And that's another way that we zone our buildings into different spaces. Do you? I do. I do. Do you zone? I zone. I don't think they zoned this. I think this was a whole bunch of people said, this is a super awesome cliff, and I'm going to hold on to this little bit of it for myself forever. <laughs> ever. <laughs> and you are never, It ever, is ever entirely it possible that there was a bit of that going on. Let's take a little of our yellow ochre and a bit of our, of our white here. I'm going to get a little more white. And we'll do our, our kind of like... Sometimes it's nice to gray it a bit with that gray color. We're going to come here and what's great is we have little trees and things coming up between the buildings. So we sort of generally paint them in, we come then refine them. And then the little trees make sense of our village, which is sort of entertaining. You can overpaint any of these and not really worry about it too much, just simply because um, there's lots of layers. Many. Many, many, many layers. I'm going to get a little more red back here. I know I've got trees coming, but got to do that. I'm going to get a little bit of a darker color going here and come around the side of this building. Now, a lot of this will get grayed the glaze it's an interesting thing so i just do a bit of a value swing and then finish it with like glazing and things and so you'll see me like nah come here so now we need roofs on a roof roof and i need coffee 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 thank you to the moderators the space is safe and encouraging um so, okay. How are you guys doing? Would you make me a cup of coffee, babe? Thank you. I will be going, I will be going and going through. So if you have a question for me, um, be sure to put it in all caps. We, you can be from anywhere and ask the question. Um, we are familiar with spelling errors. Um, I do want to be able to get to everybody's question, right? But we don't necessarily like just do shout outs and stuff. Uh, Suman says borders of each painting are masked with drafting tape at the beginning of the process and the procedures are sharp edged when the tape is off, although occasionally there's a slight seepage. Say something about that. I feel like I read it, but I don't know what you would want me to say about it. All right, I'm going to go back here and see if I see any caps. Here's the secret. And then the mods are like, don't, don't say it online. Okay, so let's talk about where we're at here a little bit in the building. These are fairly loose, right? We've just kind of created a space and a zone in our structures. We've put a highlight at the forward face of the buildings, right? We're kind of saying our sunlight's coming in this way a little bit. And we know there's going to be reflections of all these different little colors into the water, which is a ton of fun. 
We have some fun, very involved, detailed little hillside we're going to be building here. We're going to be adding awnings and greenery and all kinds of elements to our buildings. Down comes the water, and then we're also going to be doing our reflections. I maybe even, here, I'll do this. Dun, 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 dun. This is the direction that we're heading. <laughs> Thank you so much. We're going to be going this direction. Oh, I was just kind of showing them before we got into the next segment. So I'm just showing them the painting again, if they need to see the finished painting. <sighs> so going back through everything, how are you guys doing today? So in health, remember that um, it's really great to support each other. It's really great to give advice to each other. And I think that's important. Community is important when we're trying to be physically healthy, mentally healthy, emotionally healthy, because I think those are different emotional spaces. And, and it is really important to remember that all of our body chemistries are very different and all of our temperaments are very different and that it may take several members and a lot more on your team to get to a place of well-being. Like, you know, for one person, you know, perhaps a holistic path is best and then they're in touch with their doctor and they have a support group and their friends. And for another person, they may need, a, they may need much more medical intervention to find their healthy place. I think in all of those stratas, when you're talking about finding your mental well-being or your mental health, and I know art is an important part of that. I think what's an important part of that is finding uh, things that help you find your best self. Because there's that, there is a sort of like, as John was talking about, like the places that we focus our attention and all of that. But of course there's body chemistry that can make that nearly impossible. So it's about finding all those balances, doing the things like saying, well, I know these foods when I eat them, you know, help me feel well. And I know these things when I do them, help me feel well. And I know this healer helps me feel well. And just remember, we don't all have any more than we have a consistent, uniform path to wellness. We don't have a uh, um, consistent painting, painting process either. Uh, do you use that tape method and does it ruin the painting? Uh, the only time tape ruins the painting, uh, my mom is a big taper for her straight edges, and the only time tape ruins the painting is if you're not using artist tape. Um, if, you, uh, if you use a tape that pulls at the painting or destroys the painting and can lift the paint, um, that can be very damaging to the painting. Um, I use washi tape. Uh, as an alternative to artist tape, because sometimes it's less expensive, it's on sale. And also I've used masking tape that I've applied to my jeans many, many, many times to lint them up and reduce the tack so it doesn't pull the thing. Also helps if the paint is dry and cured, you'll get much less damage to the artwork. Um, Dana says, wow, you're amazing. You're the reason that I paint. I saw you and I knew you were amazing. And thank you. Well, thank you, Dana. And thank you, Inder Kumar. I'm so glad you're loving the painting, and I hope I said your name correctly. And you know, uh, what I would love about YouTube is that we're a global community. We are all over the world, but in a sense, we're an art family, right? Like, we share this love of creativity. We share this love of art, and so we may be distant geographically, but we have this beautiful space in common, and I'm really glad that we get to be here together chatting to each other in real time and it helps us remember to make our world a little bit smaller and remember that we have so much in common and that our lives are so intertwined with each other. I think that's a wonderful thing about the internet and being able to chat live. Uh, Art by Chatel says, what brush is the Art Sherpa using for this? So, so far I've used, if we, we can go over it, I've used my Cat's Tongue, my Textor Raphael. I have used... Um, my number 26, uh, bright, and I have used, and I really like this, the Princeton Select Round Blender. I'm going to be using for sure quite a lot this round. Uh, nope, I just grabbed a bright. That's not helpful. That's not helpful to you at all. I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it this round. <laughs> all right. So that's an Art Sharp round, and I'm going to be using that. So those are the brushes that I'll be using in the painting. Those I just needed brushes. to sip coffee. I'll put my painting to the side. All right. I just needed some more coffee. I'm going to get into my number four round. And Shirley says, my hair looks beautiful today. I'll take it. I'll take it. I like your hair. 
Um, Susan says, is the traceable size for the eight by eight or do we need to resize it? I believe that when you guys download it, that it may not be the size I uploaded it. Does that make sense? Because it, it goes up in pixels and so it may not be eight by eight inches. Oh, right. Yeah. So uh, you may want to go into your computer and make sure that it's an eight by eight. I even have to sometimes check that. I make them eight by eight, but I've just found as they go through their little process, <laughs> sometimes they don't end up being eight by eight. Gotcha. I don't know why, but it is a thing. I'm going to take a little of my yellow and my red, and I'm going to make some orange a little more there. And I'm going to come up and start to paint my roof line here. It's just a nice little process. Let's go there. Let's paint the roof line. Happy, happy roof line. There's lots of bushes and things here, so. I can be kind of like, eh, you'll make it. It will work itself out. I've also, I'm going to put out some quinacridone magenta. I'm using my whole bind here mm. because I, I will want to cool some of the reds. And I, and I like sometimes to cool them with the quinacridone for the side. You can see that's quite nice when I do it here. It's like, oh, it does do a nice little shadowed roof moment. It mm -hmm. does. And then I can take this one here. This one's a really fun one because we're going to come up along the edge here. And then if I have to darken it even more, I can get some ultramarine into it. And then that come back this way. Uh-oh. I think I got a little excited there and raised the roof. I'll raise the roof. Raise the roof. So when I do that, I'll just come here and I'll come in with my green. Here's another little trick. I'm going to come in with my green along some of these edges and even work them in a bit so that even before the trees come in and encroach there's a nice bit of that solid greenery going on there solid that i greenery. like that i like yeah let's get a little more orange going our little distant house here have a little bit of that going on and again we can come in and glaze too which is another nice way to uh, create some lightness I'm going to red up my roofs. Red up red my them. roofs. I'm going to get my red roofs. There's a bunch of red roofs. I'm going to red roof it. Let's red roof for a minute, and then we can come back and roof another way. I will have to constantly improve the flow of my paint by dipping into water. I'm apply a little shadow there. You know, and if you get off on, on, on it a little bit and you're like, oh man, I'm a little bit off, that's okay because you can straighten it up either with the green or with your paint or when you come back and glaze it. So don't feel like... You have options. You got so many options. You're not trapped. You're not trapped at all. I come here and this roof line actually kind of goes across this and then back. Yep. That's the start of it. We're just starting it. Just paint it calmly. I know that seems like, well, yeah, kind of obvious advice, but honestly, it makes a big difference if you just paint it calm. Mm. Let me come up. villa here the so villa that's a good question if you enlarge this and make it bigger do you need to make more detail mm -hmm. so you need to increase the level of detail if you, you want it to look exactly the same as it enlarges because you would see more detail ah could yeah. you keep it as abstract just using it's not larger? really abstract but you could keep it loose and painterly and yeah, it would still be really for. beautiful yeah so you could not make it really bigger. abstract you didn't really abstract here very well. Oh, right. I guess what I would say is that if you didn't, if you, if you, you could, like, I've seen versions of this where the buildings were nothing but just little blocks of color. Like, oh, yeah. just and the where other, you stop right here. The other one that we did on the channel, um, the uh, Monarola 
that yeah. actually was that kind of style of little okay. box of color. And I wanted to do this one because people had been asking me, what if I wanted to do it more in this other style? And I was like, oh, you know what? I should probably show that at some point. But it really does look, I mean, like, to me, honestly, even if you stopped right here, I think this is actually pretty good looking. I mean, it doesn't, like, it's not. Oh, for You're a second, I thought there. I did that in my coffee, and I was like, <laughs> not again. All week with the coffee, I've been kind of getting in there. So I'm going to get a little bit of my ultramarine, and yeah, maybe some of my burnt sienna, but mostly ultramarine. And let's start to paint some of our roof fronts. Shall we, sir? Yes. Keep keep going. You can keep talking. I'm oh, just painting. This I, is a very long, slow, arduous process, so by all means, keep talking to long, me. Long, slow, arduous? I don't know about that. This is It's nice, though. What I, what I would say, though, is that I do think that the amount of red, uh, how far you go to resolve the painting, mm -hmm. is it necessarily indicative of its value artistically? Oh, gosh, no. There and, are a lot of ways to paint this type of scene, and and you can't sit there and say, well, this one is just worth more than another. It's just different artistic processes right and it's like Avramov wasn't painting like hyper detail but we all agree that his stuff was like completely worth it and, and the question really for me is what do you like yeah because if you like it then you should do it yeah. and if you don't like it then definitely definitely don't do it, don't do it. <laughs> so you know it's there's and that's what where it comes down to there's no right or wrong answer except for what you want. And, and what you need. And yeah. I mean, yes, if you're wanting to get a green painting, using purple will not help you. But if, you know, there are lots of ways to get to have a green painting. There's, you know, like different greens. I love to hear you explain these things. <laughs> Like, well, I got an idea about it because I've been here for a while, but I you don't do. fully get it all like, yet. Okay, so John is like a fantasy football player, but for the art. The best. <laughs> the best fantasy art artist ever. He like, is. I got, I got more armchair art time in. Like, I'd be hard-pressed to say who has more armchair art time in than me. Seriously. <laughs> You have definitely logged the hours, haven't you? But it's not like, you know, I even consider it, it's, it, I do feel like, you know, I have watched every football game the Kansas City Chiefs Let's have played ever. take a little ever. yellow and But that's, I don't together. watch, you know. <laughs> uh, does it make you a Kansas City Chief? No, but yeah, it's like, you know, I, I, I don't watch any football or really, unless it's Formula One, because, you know, Ferrari, but that's about it. That's about all the sports I get to watch, and that's only rarely because, well, I like things with high octane ratings and Ferrari. So. You do. So I'm painting the front of each roof, whatever color it is. Like I'm doing green here, which was the yellow and thalo green, and then I might come back and be like, "Oh, this would be good here." I want to make sure that I also kind of get into some of the. Um, if I need a darker space around the side of a building, I've got to remember to get those in. Because sometimes as you're painting, you will mm. be like, oh, yeah, I need to catch that over there. I forgot to put that in the shadow, didn't I? You did. And right now, when you do these things, you are just like, oh, I'm just putting in the shadow or I'm coming here. and I'm going to go close some doors and uh, make sure that they're ready. They're going to drop a tree on the uh, kitchen side. Oh, are they? Can you empty this out? Yeah. And I will, uh, okay. Ha oh my gosh. So, uh, Debbie Mitchell, uh, says, ha ha. Thank you. So he's on YouTube, but argues with anyone who says he blends colors. Yeah. It's so hard to be on YouTube as an artist, isn't it? It's just so hard because normally you're in your studio, you do your thing, you form your opinions about your artwork and yourself and you, um, put this here so you can see where we're going and you're you know you're isolated but now suddenly you put yourself like i have painted on a public street i have painted in a mall at christmas for my gallery i have been out in the public from a, 
a very young tender age and really been like learned a set of tools to take in feedback, feedback that I enjoyed and feedback that I didn't enjoy. But sometimes artists get out there and they have no tool sets to take in feedback that they didn't enjoy. And sometimes even I, f I get to this place where I'm like, all feedback becomes some good feedback in some kind of way. Even if I don't agree with it, even if it's not actionable for me, um, like if somebody's like, oh, I didn't like the sound very much to the video, that's good feedback, right? Like that's going to help me work on my sound. If like three people say that, then I know I've got a problem. But sometimes when people are on YouTube, they, they feel defensive and they feel concerned. They, they have opinions, you know, and that gets to kind of create that perfect storm. And it's, it's just, you know, in that situation, I think if I was trying to get the most out of that instructor, I would, I would really, again, get back into that nonviolent communication and, and, and ask them, you know, how they came to that feeling and why they feel that way. Because even if they, even if they're not clear on their process or they maybe don't know something about art specifically, like in terminology, like they're using the wrong terms to describe what they're doing, you're still going to get a lot out of them. You're still going to get a lot of information out of them. And, and that can be really good. There's an artist on YouTube who attacks other artists for doing grisaille painting in watercolor because that artist believes that they brought that technique to the platform and so therefore should be credited no matter what uh, by anyone who's ever watched them, ever been subscribed to them, ever have anything to do with them. Now understand that the grisaille maybe in watercolor goes back to the 11th century and it's a very old technique. And I don't think this person has got clarity in that in, in, in a real way. Um, you know, so you're dealing with personalities out here. You're dealing with, uh, a lot going on, um, with different people, uh, it's hard, like, and, and I have to remind myself sometimes, even as a teacher, as an instructor, I'll go by a channel and I'll see something where I'm like, well, oh, that's really dangerous. Like, people could get hurt. Like, people could get sick. And I have to remember it's not my classroom, right? Because if you look at each YouTube channel as somebody's classroom, right, I try to apply in my manners, um, classroom manners. If I walk into my friend's class that they're teaching, I am very polite in that class, right? I mm -hmm. don't sit there and like pass out my card to the students going, you know, I teach art too. <laughs> Do you want to come see my art class? <laughs> Which does happen in real life sometimes and it's not well received. But if we treat each other on YouTube, like our channels or our spaces, our classrooms, our art studios, and we use our art studio manners yep. there, we do tend to get along a lot better. But it is hard because sometimes you'll be going along and you forget and you want to just say something because you're like, what are you doing? I don't get it or I disagree with that thought or process. Um, I think one of my triggers is one of the, I'm letting John get his stuff. When, so you're going to listen to me monologue like a villain here. One of my triggers is um, when an artist makes like a really declarative statement about like, you will not grow as an artist if you use reference photos. That's just dumb. and I want to say that that is not uh, well-conceived thinking it's so <laughs> right? narrow, i light. want to get into it but then i gotta remember they haven't like they haven't had me on as a collaborator if if my face isn't on the screen with them where they invited me in on that stream and then asked me that question where it's acceptable for me to give that opinion i kind of don't well it's their house it's their house right Right. That's why I've never been in another YouTuber's channel in the comments and ever said, hey, come check out my stuff because no. I would never do it to my friend at their art show, at their class, at their lecture, like ever. Wouldn't do it. Wouldn't do it. I just wouldn't. No. No. So. Did I just monologue like a villain? You did a bit. All right. Yay me. Okay. Back to your. Back to back my thing. to the painting. Back Sherpa. to the grind. Let's let all that have a rest for a minute. My mind needs to You rest. just rested it. I didn't just rest it. I didn't just rest it. So now I'm going to come in. And I'm going to make some very bright greens. I'm going to take a little bit of my yellow. And I'm going to lighten my green here with my number 12 Princeton. And let, let's come up here and start to create little, little tree spaces. And I think it's important to think about tree shapes, right? The, the shapes that they make, the way that they're formed. Man, I've been thinking a lot about that. 
you have been thinking a lot. We are thinking about trees quite a lot right now because of what we're doing in our so house. So many trees. Sometimes I'll get some orange going because, you know, why wouldn't you? I don't want to take away all my dark values. If I take away all my dark values, what will happen? Well, the trees will disappear. It will just be very what, washed out with all the bright light. It, it'll just be one tone. And painting green on green really throws a lot of artists, I've noticed. It just, it does. It just, it just totally throws them for a loop. Mm. Uh, da, 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 everyone's talking about the Princeton brushes. Princeton brushes got some pretty good stuff out there. They I don't like every Princeton brush. I've had a few duds, but every once in a while, I'll pick one up and I'm like, I like how that do. Mm -hmm. right? And you got to realize that don't even discount a company just because you run into a bunch of products that they have that you don't like. You don't right. want to ever discount it because they might be really good at one thing. Like even before I got into Daniel Smith watercolors, they made a, a ground that was a gold acrylic ground. Yep. It was liquid gold, and it was, like, the only one that I knew to get at the time, and I was, like, really obsessed with it. But I never really used any of their other products, right? Liquid gold. But then I found Holbein's metallic gesso, which just makes all other metallic gesso look like it wasn't even trying. Like, it was just kidding. And, <laughs> but I stayed kind of tapped into Daniel Smith. And then I discovered that there were grounds they had so I could paint watercolor paintings on rocks. They have beautiful pigmented paints. They have all these products that I love. So even though maybe it changed on one thing, that doesn't really matter because. You had options. Uh -oh. I had options. You moved down the. <laughs> I did. I'm bushing. I'm squatching. I'm making, make places for your Sasquatch to hide is all make, I'm saying. So they can come visit. Yeah, if you don't make places for your Sasquatch to hide, what is he supposed to do? Got to give him a place to hide on the hill. Otherwise, mm -hmm. everybody knows he's there and he's not a mysterious creature anymore. And he wants to be a mysterious creature. I'm going to continue to light my green <laughs> with some yellow. And I'm going to come to the top of this grouping. Oh, Paula would like to know if the bear stopped by. I, we have not seen him again. Mm -hmm. Not seeing the bear. But I do believe the cutting down of all the, so we, there's a fungus that was out there. And so we're trying to make sure it doesn't get to uh, the other trees. Because mm -hmm. we've got these arborists and they climb way up the tree and they have this amazing like lumberjack, like man with one with nature kind of engagement. I don't want to say it's like gender specific because I'm sure it's not, but you know, like, but this whole experience with the tree and then the tree comes down and then it's, I, I don't know, they talk about the energy and the earth. It's really fantastic. But I think the bear took, took that to be like, these people are crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Bear's like, I'm outie. <laughs> Bear's like, that's, that's a lot, guys, <laughs> even for me. So you can kind of see that I'm creating that, that zone, right? We want that zone and let's create another little zone here. Zone it up. You see the zone? I'm going to get some white into that and a little more yellow. Oh, thank you, Miss. I was going to oh. say Geico Becky, but thank you, Miss Becky. And I love your thanks emoji. Keep adding. This is a very light value, right? Adding a very light value. I'm adding white and a little bit of yellow just to keep that very, very light. Very light. This is a light pressure I'm adding to this. Hmm. And you can see, like, when I do that, it creates, like, the zones of these bushes. And the bush starts to have its own shape as well. Isn't that fun? It is. I may have to make myself some coffee. Do you? I know. Oh, it's yeah, a, it's okay. a long class. I'm, I don't know what to say. I don't want to, I don't want to over caffeinate, <laughs> so I'm going to be chill for a little while. I can speed along on these things, but. You're doing good. If, then you don't really get the painting you're trying to get. I'm going to kind of blend some green through here. That's because I know I'm going to be coming back with green. It's very helpful. <laughs> and always brighten everything, but just getting in there, making sure. And it's uh, got its dark value. Now is a good time to take um, 
your number four round and let's make a slightly brighter orange just real fast I have a little water on my brush a little more than I would want so the paint gets too fluid I'm gonna make a kind of front area to this that's a bit brighter mm -hmm. I'm going to get my yellow, my red out, some yellow, some red. And we see that I'm in neck. Sometimes I'm like always worried, like, oh, maybe it's a, where my head is on the palette now. There we go. We can see that. Just adding that little highlight there. And maybe coming in with a strong little bit of yellow right here on this edge. And I might come in with a little strong bit of yellow, maybe right here. Kind of creating a, a sense of space. Let's let that dry for a second. And what's wonderful is we can come in and we're gonna be we're gonna be doing some greens. We're gonna be piecing some green stuff out. So I'm gonna get into my number four round. And I'm gonna come along the top of these and I'm gonna just tap. Some tree line top. Just a little bit. And the reason we do that is because these up here, there may be a different little structure of tree. And so by changing up the brushes, it also changes up the texture of the tree, making it uh, more believable as a different type of tree. Just tapping up and down just on the toe of the brush. Giving it a slightly different texture. Yeah, just, you know, it's not that I won't come back and do something. It's just, why not, right? Also gives you a chance to sort of play with all that. Get a little more phthalo green into it. Oh, you're kind of like here. See how we're just creating little zones of tree? Zones of tree. Little zones of tree. I have learned those zones of trees actually exist in nature, and they are for reasons. They are for reasons. <laughs> and you can read those trees if you learn those reasons. <laughs> We're so influenced. <laughs> we are so influenced. All right, I'm adding a little bit of a kind of a higher lighted highlight. Just, you know, piece it out. Shape your trees. Shape your trees with sunlight. Someone's asking, what are you doing? You'd be like, I'm shaping my trees with sunlight. I'll be with you in a minute. It just confuses them so much. They don't really they know no what to say idea. to you anymore. They'll be like, because they don't know how important that is. They're is like, that time dependent? <laughs> <laughs> You'll be like, yes, my paint is wet. Be with, just be quiet. <laughs> you don't know what I'm doing. Can I call you back in a minute? Reversal. I'm shaping my trees with sunlight. I'm coming back and adding some shadows. I'm shaping my trees with shadows. Yeah, if if, if you have another acceptable answer, you can totally Jordy LaForge this. And pull out some like artistic jargon and be like, you know, I got to get my figure foreground reversal going while I have my wet paint out. Otherwise, I'm going to have, you know, huge problems. We have huge problems. We're going to have gloopy paint. And they're like, oh, okay. <laughs> if, if that's important. I'm going to take a little bit of my ultramarine and my burnt sienna. I do like to use this for window colors where I can, and I will try with it first, but I always keep a little black out there just to make sure. Let's imply a window right here. And then I'll take a little of my zinc into it because these are forward windows. I'm going to come here. Adding a little blue to it. This is sort of like this distant little house. So it's, it's nice to play with, a safe one to play with. I'll kind of imply a red door here a little bit. I know I'm going to have plants come over it, but I want to have it there. And then I'm going to give some white shutters. Ooh. Little 
Denise just had said, Dear Cinnamon, it is a joy watching you paint and to create paintings for us to follow. You inspire me every day. Just love and enjoy you and John. Being thank playful, you. it makes every day better. Thank you and your family. Well, thank you for being with us. That is very sweet and kind, and I appreciate it deeply. I really do. It's just nice to hear that what you do is helpful. I wish everybody could have that experience, to hear what they do is helpful and impactful and really matters to others. Mm-hmm. I think that's an important thing to, to have. I'm going to add a little burnt Anna to this and come in with some yellow. These are kind of like these low trees coming down here. You know, I always come back with some dark, but I just wanted to get that in there. I think some shading. Good stuff. So can you guys see how your trees are starting to be there and your stuff's starting to be there? Now I'm going to take a little green. A little green. And a little burnt sienna. Oh my mm. gosh, you guys must be like so over this mix. And we're going to make some tall trees now. Tall. So let's come up high. We just want some different texture structure. We all know what kind of tree it is. Yeah. It's a, mm, it would depend. I don't know what kind of trees they have in that part of the world. I think this one is a juniper. Could be a juniper. Whoa, I'll be right back. Okay. Now let's bring one of these in front of the house, right? The house is tucked into the hillside, so we've got to tap in. You'll notice I'm just tapping the brush up and down. I'm just on the toe of the brush. These are small little motions. I'm making small little headway. This can involve painting. This is what we mean by three hoop. <laughs> There's a lot going on with the three hoop painting. Getting those little textures in there is very, very helpful. Now, once I have those in, I'm going to come in and get my green and my yellow and various values and start to piece out. Uh, Oh, purple's here, and I see Mona, and I see Noletta. Oh, goodness, yes. All the favorite peoples. Tap up and down and create some little defined leaves here, shall we? Little defined leaves, little defined leaves. Tapping up and down. Tap, 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 tap. Tap, 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 tap. And the trick to this will be to maintain a deep value of green. So I'm going to just make sure that where I am, you guys can see it on camera. Tap, 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 tap. That's pretty good right there. Let's take a little bit of that green value and come into our little trees here. And just start to say, oh, maybe some of you, the leaves there will be a little bit lighter coming down. Into this one a little bit too. Brighten those values up. It's just a small fussy bit of kit. Sometimes you've just got to deal with a small fussy bit of kit. Colleen Moochie says, watching Cinnamon Paint has become my own calming version of watching ASMR. You may be the only person who considers me ASMR because the ASMR people are, are like, you talk a lot. Would you just put on some piano music and shuffle yourself to the side? <laughs> like, probably not, but thanks, bunches. Mm. I'm going to get some brighter green. added the cad yellow into that mix right so it is getting brighter but it's still a little bit knocked back by the burnt sienna i'm very delicately finding little bits you know i'm painting details but i i don't actually consider myself detail painting here interestingly enough what i'm doing is i'm creating i don't know like a 
like the feeling of all the detail. I, you know, if you wanted to really capture all this, I would probably go bigger. I wanted to be like even more detailed than this in the canvas. And see, I'm kind of creating that little sense of the bush coming down. Get a bunch of this brighter green on here. Let's start finding these embankments. You know, sometimes when we're painting, it feels like these areas of green on green are almost in the way of the fun, right? The fun part of the painting. But they are their own element and should be treated as such. They should be treated with, with all the joy that you can muster for your grasses, for your bushes, these, these elements of shrubbery and the textures that they create. Every bit is interesting to me as the village that I'm painting in color. Just tapping up and down. Again, I'm not lighting, lightening my green initially with white. I'm lightening it with yellow. I can lighten it with white after I've lightened it a lot with yellow. But if I just come in with white on a phthalo green, what I'm going to get is definitely, definitely much more of that. Ah, all right. How you doing? Let's add a little bit of white. Are they? Oh, wow. I'm adding some yellow. Some yellow. I, I think so, it? but okay. we're, I, I've been watching it, so I've been okay. trying to stay where you framed it. Okay, good. These are the highlighty little leaves. Let's Thank really you. tap them up and down. You're such a team player. I am a team player. I like what I do. I take what I do for a living pretty seriously, but I like it as well. You know, Lori, I'm with you. Whenever I can't sleep, I just try to listen to Cinnamon talk too. He's not joking. <laughs> Lori says that uh, when she was going through a hard time, she was uh, really enjoying that she could relax and watch you and uh, de-stress. And so I relate. I just had a, had an opportunity to say, hey, wife, how you doing? I would be like the worst beauty blogger. No, you'd be awesome. No, because I could not, I wouldn't drama. I would be like... I couldn't do it. Like when that first stuff happened with Toddy and Jeffree Star uh, and all of that, I was like, are you a grown woman calling a kid out on a YouTube channel without calling his mom first? <laughs> <laughs> also, how is no one's lawyers involved? This is like super damaging to his brand. You can't just make random accusations. Everyone's like, oh, it's like so perfect. And I was like, this isn't cool. Like this is a private phone call. <laughs> And I'm like, I would not be good at this. I would, I would be calling people directly. I'd be like, what are you saying? You know, I what wouldn't be like the first place purpose? to pull them out. And I think that that's like part of that channel brand. I think that, you know, I don't really like, okay, I'm not saying I won't watch the tea, but I don't necessarily like to spill the tea. Oh. I like to drink the tea. <laughs> Ruby in the Sun said, I painted the owl cat for my three-year-old grandson last week, and he hugged it when he got it. <gasps> I think that's awesome. That is so super awesome. That gonna, is so super awesome. I'm going to check on that crash. That big crashing noise? Yeah. yeah, you might want to. There's more of it. If it's outside, we're good. If it's inside, that's maybe kind of a thing. So can you see how we've really painted these bushes? Like we've really created them? All right, I'm one of them. I love the Silver Brush Company, says Noletta Cardenas. I totally get that. And Priyanka Ghosh says, I painted with cinnamon, but but live is an experience. I can't wait to be up tomorrow to paint this. I'm so glad you think of our live as an experience. I think we do um, we do have some strict rules in the chat, but I think that we create and curate a very safe space for people to be together, no matter where you come from, no matter what age you are, you know, where we can all come together and share this zone of art with each other. And I, and I really love that about us very, very much. I also really love this right here. 
And when John comes back, I might have him zoom in like on the high detail about like everything that's going on there. While we're at this, let's go ahead and get a little, that's very green yellow. I'm going to go ahead and just pop a bit of a yellow sort of highlight to sort of define this space. And get my little red into it. Just a scotch. Just a smidge. Kind of. There we go. Now we can really see that roof. Maybe these two together. And defining that door a bit more this time, I think. Can you microwave my coffee, Dev, when you're at your okay, next breaking place? When you, you go get yours, when you go get yours. I'm going to add a little bit of a roof line here. A little more defined. I'm going to get some of my glaze out with my yellow. And then I'm going to come right here and just sort of glaze some of this. Just a slightly brighter yellow. Get into my green. I just want to make sure that that feels like consistent and nice. I'm going to come in and grab a little of my uh, ultramarine and even my zinc here. And I'm going to come along the side of this building. I want to actually make this lighter than I have it. And also bluer than I have it. I start to refine this as well. Making sure it feels very straight and organized. We got to keep our building straight and organized. My cupboard is not organized, but my building is organized. I'm going to go ahead and kind of touch in some, some dark little windows here. Tapping that in. And you have to decide how many windows you want. And where their placement is. And you can see it's just like a very little kind of calm mark there. And I'll go ahead and imply an opening. But since a bush is going to come back, I won't worry about that too much. I'm going to get into my black here. And my glaze. And I'm going to go... Just touching. And then two wide ones, I think. And then we'll sort of pick those up. I think this will look really nice if it's got a little bit of red around it. I'm going to do my red, my cad red, and my quinacridone. So these are sort of the colored shutters that you might expect. Kind of arch up there. Imply those little things. Um, one of the nice things that I can do is I can come in in my gray. I can take a little bit of my yellow ochre and Mars black together. Make a lighter and a gray yellow. I'm dipping my brush in water to improve the flow. And I'm going to create a highlight on the sidewalk here. That wasn't improved enough. Sometimes you'll improve the flow and you'll be like, that was not improved enough. So you'll got to come back and be like, all right, I'm going to just improve this one more time. And then I'm going to create a little bit of a highlight here on the cement. It's a bit dry brushed and that's okay. Because again, we're trying to create those spatial differences. And that spatial stuff is a big deal. Getting my glazy medium involved too. And 
glazing medium. And I'm going to come here and darken. Good bit. Let's even get into the blue, maybe, and darken the side of this building. Glaze. Just underneath here, I'm going to darken that. I like painting in these little, these little villas. Yeah. It, uh, it gives me a lot of joy. I also find I like to add some shadows under roofs. I think those little villages are very joyful. They're joyful to visit, I can honestly say, and they're joyful to paint. They're, they're joyful to paint in person. They're very joyful to look at. They're joyful to look at. You know, they are special, should be protected. The burr isn't too bad in the background. Oh, you can hear there. Uh, no. We are painting long. This is a long painting. And <laughs> John's like, you said it would be faster. I lied to you. Eh, this is pretty good. We're actually doing good. I think that you're a bit ahead of the other game. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Not that it matters. So he says. For you. But it matters to him. So I'm going to add a little bit of orange here again and into the front of this. I just like to create spaces for these highlights to be and find this. It's always nice to give things a straight up and down aspect. And again, I'm going to show you a cool technique with glazing, but it's just, it's good to build these up and then you get into it and then. Along the top with that green and I'll be like, hey. That's funny. It's funny. The, oh, mm. no, no lettuce says it's not that bad. So. Oh, is it not? That, you know, yeah. it's, it's a free that, art lesson, man. In, it comes with grindage. <laughs> it's, o it's only... <laughs> it's only I don't know what to tell you. It's like Polly Shore showed up to our house. He's out front. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. There's like a few people who were like, yeah, that's funny, actually. All the millennials are like, wait, what? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what that... Stop it! It's no, I'm not doing millennial shade. I'm actually very pro all generations. Yeah, I think all the generations are really cool and bring something awesome to the mix. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to create a little kind of sense of sunlight and then I will. And I'm going to, I'm going to say again, guys, don't show up to somebody else's art class and start handing out your cards as a teacher. You're going to be shown the door. Oh yeah, man. Seriously. Just don't do it. YouTubers are about supporting each other. Yeah. But and it is, is important to support each other on YouTube because this is a rough platform. But I would never go into somebody else's business and hand out my card. Especially if we did the same thing. I have a friend, Angela Anderson. If some of you guys watch her too. Do I go into her live and say, hey, hey, come here? Not unless we're collaborating. Because it's just not polite. It's just not kind. It's just not courteous. It's just... You know, and I get it. Growing a channel is hard. And I'll tell you right now, what helped me grow mine was taking advantage of all the free education that YouTube gave us through the creator blogs and through mm -hmm. the YouTube Academy. Take all the classes, do that stuff, because nothing will work more than getting better at what you specifically do. But coming into somebody else's thing and trying to drop your links, I mean, if you do the math, like, so if you have a 10% uptake rate from, like, all the links that you drop, how many links would it's you have to drop it. to get to like a million subscribers? Yeah, it's just it's too it's many. Just not the way. It is not the way. It is not the way. Even Yoda agrees. It is not the way. And, you know, it's, I, I totally understand the inclination to like do something that you're inspired by somebody else so you can try to get this. It's just, man, you, you, you just, it's hard to try to understand like this is 
just like anybody else's. Like you wouldn't go into somebody else's lecture hall and say, hey, I'm a teacher I mean, too. I wouldn't, but Angela Anderson told me a story. This like happened to her in real life. She had a class. Yeah. Her student had won a bunch of awards. <laughs> And it's the girl was there winning an award, and this other art teacher handed the student and the student's parents a card and said, I teach art classes too. And I would have been, I mean, like. Oh my gosh. I was just like, what? I, I would have Where kicked was that she person. Raised? Right. Ugh. I would have just booted them. I would have been like, oh, excuse me. No, I would have snatched that card right out of the person's hand, handed it back to the person, and shown them the door. Well, you're a little extreme, but yeah. <laughs> oh, you know, I have been compared to a New Yorker, and I do not consider that an insult. It's not an insult. Why would that be an insult? It's awesome. New York is awesome. They're direct, communicative people. <laughs> they have a very direct communication style. John Emmanuel Baptiste Zorg, at your service, sir. But I seriously, like, people really... I, you know, a lot of times people will be like, oh, you're just telling me to go do the creator blog. Seriously, I don't think I could have done this without it. Hmm. It's a oh. really useful resource. I am glazing. And you notice what I'm doing here is I'm just constantly trying to refine the highlights and shadows that are on the building. So if it's a forward facing part of the building, right, it's more in a highlight. If it's a side facing part of the building, we want to put it more in shadow. Mm hmm. And we're just glazing and kind of trying to come in and make some dimensionality. I get I get into it. It's like a crazy thing, but I do. I get into it. I get into I it. I get into it, too. I do. It's like super awesome. Callie says, I don't think you're too extreme in that situation. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I just, just, just a crazy thing. Sorry. This is not the place. This is not it. But there is a place. There is a place time. for that. There is a place in time. I'm actually thinking of doing a, um, a pay it forward video soon where uh, people can drop their links and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Drop them links. Uh, Trisha Woods, recently there was artwork in our videos a couple weeks ago, and I saw the, sh uh, the shadows in the blue, and I was so excited, all because I can see how much I have learned and see after painting with you guys. Mm. And Jan says, thank you, Cinnamon, for your encouraging, respect, and kindness. There's so much bad behavior out there. I just think maybe people don't know. They just or, don't understand. I, right. Like, I don't think people get up and they're like, ha. I don't think they do the, like, <laughs> <laughs> It's that dastardly dog. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, I had, who will not be named, another YouTuber coming to my group who was, like, friending everybody. Oh, to the point man. we were getting, like, complaints that okay. this very creepy stranger was friending that, only women. Yeah. And, that was the. Yeah. We won't say. And so it was like, it was like a really extreme situation. And, and it's really hard to know how to handle that because I, again, I don't think they they get up and they go, <laughs> I think it's just, it, you don't like, there's a context of it that doesn't occur. But then when it does, like all the times I'll see uh, YouTubers coming up and, and, and they'll do that. And then as they grow, then they realize, oh, that, that when it happens to them, they're like, oh, oh no, it's maybe not as cool as I thought it was. Uh, so there's a good example. But I don't think it's nefarious, if that makes sense. I don't think it's malicious. It's, Sometimes it is. Sometimes people just don't think I deserve to be here at all, like in any way. And so they're coming from that place. But I feel like the universe will handle that mm. for me. Don't you? I do. Karma. That's it. And it's not like I'm going to stop being me. Let's keep painting buildings. You keep painting buildings. <laughs> I'm going to watch you paint buildings. I know you are because you're trapped here until I'm done. No, I'm actually okay. Okay, so we're going to add some arches to some of these little buildings. I like little arches. Little arches. A big arch. I get a little excited with my arch. Sometimes I get excited. I'm going to add an arch here. I like, I like the different arches. I don't know what to tell you. I really like them. Ryan likes your nefarious laugh. <laughs> My kids think it's so funny. <laughs> Mom. Do you remember, um, I'm trying to remember, the, it was a French-Canadian show that had 
the athlete superhero dude. <gasps> um, and they all had to eat vegetables, and some of them ate candy, and there was so much gymnastics, and there uh, yeah. was just like... I loved the bad guy. He was so cool. He had a great mustache. He was always dressed well. He always had the best bad plans. Yeah, he did have some good bad plans. I, like, not, I mean, not like Gargamel good, but like... No, like Acme... Um, like I'm going to buy an Acme hole and trap everybody into it. It just doesn't work out for him. You know? I mean, I think the neighborhood need, I, I guess I felt as a mom that the neighborhood needed to take care of that guy. You know, I think for me, I was just like, this neighborhood needs to really deal with this guy. Cause he's like a problem for the kids. And <laughs> also where are their parents? That's always my question in these shows. It was my question with Dora. It's all, it's still my question all the time. Where are the parents? Where are your parents? It's, come on, man. That's not, that's scary. That guy shouldn't be talking to anybody. What's happening? Yeah, it just get, it worries me sometimes. I mean, with a little brighter yellow over here. You just spend, you know, what's nice about this. This is almost like a Zen doodle painting these little buildings. It's just a calming, happy little exercise. And yo, I'm enjoying myself here. You know, and then you just, I'm going to get some green. And then you're like, oh, you know, it'd be nice. Oh, some green shutters. That seems good. And mm, then that would like, be good. Oh, yeah. Green shutters. I can't wait to put the, I love putting the flowers in on the village. That's when the village becomes my village. With the flowers? Yeah. When the village is, Village is my village when the flowers are all in place. Hmm. I'm just like that. That's when I've got it. You know, I'm going to get some yellow on here. That's still too green, but I'm still going to go for it. I'm not going to back off because I'm crazy like that. Don't give up on it. It believes in you. It does. It believes in you and you've got to believe in it too. It's a two way street. <laughs> Uh, I got to just probably put my windows in first and then come back and frost my windows. So who was it that said you got to have faith? George Michaels. I think so. I think, faith, it, I think faith, we faith. could all you reflect gotta have faith. on the words of Mr. Michael as we paint today. Just got to have Eat some faith. vegetables, dude. I can't lose any more. He's still here with us, right? Uh, I, I, you know what? I haven't been checking up on my... I have lost a lot of my favorite musicians <laughs> anymore. That's a crazy place. So we're going to try to follow the roof line on this line here. It's a weird deal, I know. Just trust me on this one. And if your windows get too big or out of shape, it's really wonderful because what you do is you just come back and put them back with the uh, shutters. Like shutters. Shut the shutters. Shut the front door. Shut it. Shut the front shutters. Shut the front shutters. My friend John always used to say that. Shut the front door. Did he? Yeah. He's like, yeah, I'm about it. He had the, he had the most Canadian non-cursing curses I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I will introduce you to many non-cursing curses. Which was kind of cool. It is really cool. I'm just adding a little highlight on the inside of the door, guys. So, if you've ever wondered, like, what does it take to do one of these little things? A lot. Oh, Jerry says, sadly, he has passed. Uh, what is a plein air painting, asked Bianca of Ryan. But I'll answer for Ryan. Plein air painting is when you go outdoors and you paint what you see in real life. Plein air, outside. It's super fun. Okay, it's funny. The last has has a sad face. You can see that <laughs> this oh, one right yeah. here. It'll be happy face in a minute. Don't worry. It's gonna it's gonna be happy face. It's just it has a moment here. So I get the shutters on and we work some of these things out. It's just uh, 
you know, sometimes it just takes a second to find your way. Don't give up. You just got to have faith. Gotta have faith. It is. Gotta I'm just have saying. Faith. That's t- today was brought to you by that song. Today was? Today. Oh, t- today. Just today. I'm getting some blue glaze. Because why not? I'm going to add some more shadow to the side of this wonderful, wonderful building. A little extra zinc white for this one. I can come put the windows back pretty easily, but I just felt like it wasn't bright enough. So sometimes you do that. You're like, I want to brighten you up. Now, red. Red door. Red now, door. Is there a significance to red doors? They're pretty. There, well, I didn't know if there was like a historical. There's probably a historical significance to red doors. I thought there might be, but I just don't know what it is because you see I also don't know what it is, but that doesn't matter. I'm going to add a little awning right here. See that little kind of pull stroke where I kind of arc that out? That's how I get that little awning going. Ah. Yeah. Sometimes you want an awning. I know. I all the time think I really want an awning. Do you? You're like, I need an awning. So how come you're not at the easel here today? Well, one, we don't, well, you should answer that because there's a bunch of reasons for that. <laughs> well, we're doing a lot of updates in the studio. So what you're going to see here over the next, uh, oh, I don't know, probably a couple weeks is that Cinnamon's going to go ahead and use the studio here a bit more um, just so that we can get. Uh, we also had some hell stuff happen. I had a, I had a little thing, so I'm just kind of like I'm painting on these long marathon paints, but I'm, I'm sitting down during them yeah, as well. T- until we get readjusted. And there's going to be an update about that as well. There is. I have seen it. I know it is so. <laughs> He's like, I know it's so. I got to take my one building out of its... Uh... Out of blue its one awning. thing. Shutters here. These are blue shutters. Blue shutters. Just getting some white going. I'm gonna come between here. Yeah. Now, I am going to take my white and I'm going to pull this out and hopefully create an awning. Hopefully, mostly, monsters come out at night, mostly. I'm trying to get the for- forward little fold to my awning that you get. Yep. That you do. And I definitely, definitely want to darken what's under here. Darken I'll it. come back with uh, flowers and things, but you just kind of do want it to be a little little bit more in shadow there we go wiping off let me grab a little bit of my red and come on the inside of that there just continue to touch up and you create your little your little zones i see more zones there's so many zones in this painting guys it's just, i don't know zones. what to tell you there's a lot of zones and you got to get them all in and then you still have water reflections and we still have flowers so my estimation that it would go faster live was incorrect Meh, but at least this time you're like getting a chance to people can see it i'm gonna even zoom in a little bit here and I make, I'm not sure if I'm going to get some coffee. 
Uh, if you do, I think it's a reasonable choice. It's a reasonable decision to get yourself some coffee. I'm still on the fence on it yet. You're like, I don't know how this day is going to go. I'm not sure when I'm going to need coffee. coffee. See, i got to pace it out so that I... I, time, I want the I want the I'm going to time the next coffee to be towards the end of this painting. I think towards the end of this painting. Yeah, towards the end of it. Mm -hmm. gonna, well, I mean, it's, maybe, it's your maybe. choice. Like you've made that decision. I'm thinking maybe in half an hour ish. Adding a little yellow and red just to brighten up the front of this building. And I'm painting around my windows. Okay, just adding a little bit. Adding a little bit. And always reposition a window. Uh, Elizabeth Oldman says, my front door is white. There was a sale on white paint. <laughs> well, see, sometimes maybe that's the reason. Kids, my poor kids. They're laughing. Okay. You don't think they need a rescue? I think it's so worried okay. about so far, I'm listening. It's a long day. Ooh. Jerry says red doors were supposed to ward off evil spirits. Yeah. And then at some point it was meant to support, uh, show support for English royalty. I'm good with both of those things. Support the royals. <laughs> what? Well, Queen of England. Huh? Queen of England. Long live the queen. She's, you know. She's cool. She's cool. She's cool. She's got cool hats. She's got hats. I don't really, look, we're not really weighing in on this. Like, don't. I mean, like, you know, it's your country. You do what you like. I like. I think that the queen is cool. I would, if we had a, you know, a cool queen like that, I would like, be like, yeah, that'd be cool. She does that well. She queens, like, better than any other queen I know. Because we know so many. No, but, you know, it's that she's still up there. I mean, if I was going, if someone said, name a queen, I would go there. That's what you would name? You'd be like, that's it? Queen of Hearts, maybe second. Queen of England is first. She's also the Queen of Canada. Which is interesting. Oh my gosh, I am getting to the end of this, but it doesn't <laughs> feel like I am. Uh, I'm just adding, you know, you just come through and you just keep adding values and things to. Ooh, Trish Wood says, I read it was to show weary travelers their home was a safe place to rest themselves and their horses. Neat. So like the safety pin in the Middle Ages. <laughs> uh. It's like a candle in the window. And they were like, stop burning candles at night. It's not safe. Paint it isn't red. safe, man. <laughs> Paint your door red. It's not safe. That is completely correct. Don't do that. That's not a safe decision that you've made. I'm going to come along each of the roofs with kind of like the green roof with like kind of a green highlight. So much more painting on these than you than we did last time, right? Yeah. But completely worth it. Now I have an awning to stripe. An awning to stripe, sir. An awning to stripe. May have to put out my paint again soon because it's getting very dry. I don't mind. Early you American history. One if I land, two if I see. Something like that. Uh. Don't tread on me. Na America's first naval army. <laughs> they had a really cool flag. Yeah. Our first navy flag. Making those little stripes. So see, we got a little stripey awning coming down. Can be nice to come back with, you know, a little bit of white in there and... Definitely will be fixed by glazing. Okay. So here we go. We've got some stuff. Now it gets fun. 
I'm going to sip some coffee before we get the fun. So now I'm going right. to start adding some shadows, some highlights, but I'm also going to add uh, window boxes, more hop pops to the shutters, you know, all kinds of things that... Oh, thank you, Catherine Crom. I really appreciate that. And to everyone who's here who's been hanging through this lesson, I really appreciate that. Me too. I, I like having a full house of people to hang out with. It gets... It would be very lonesome doing this alone. Like when the stream breaks and I have to pretend that it's still going and there's no God, one here. And Cinnamon's like, so what does everybody think? And I'm like, well, everybody thinks it's awesome because today I'm everybody. <laughs> I really don't love when you do that. But you don't know. I truly don't. It is true. You like do right keep now, it from me. We're not really live. I'll, like I'm spoofing all these people in chat so that you don't know it. That would be more funny if it wasn't potentially true. This is a pre-recorded chat from another stream that I'm just feeding up here so you will feel like... <sighs> Adding little shadows under roofs, you can see. And trying to create a, a zone. There we go. Building it up. Building it up. Building it up. I'm waiting to see if Guess I have to go Guess what yell. we do next. We take our burnt sienna and our green. We make a dark color because that's what we like. And I'm going to tap up and down right here and make some flowers coming down. Mm -hmm. Coming down, coming down, coming down. Coming down, coming down, coming down. I need to put some, I think I got a little crazy with my overgrowth here. So I'm going to go like this and kind of paint some more. Paint this set of plants and that set of stuff. Just a little bit. <laughs> not enough space. So we need a little break there. So I'm going to bring this up and down. I'm across here. Let's continue where everywhere that there's going to be a little bit of flowers, right? You're going to put this dark green down first. I definitely think we need something right here and it, it kind of drips down. Yeah, as if there's sort of a, a window box or whatever or railing. So I'm going to drip it. Drip it. Yep. Yep, yep. Because that's what you're doing is you're talking about the different places where these, these you know, these creative plantings and all that stuff. Yay! No? Okay. Did I, you just make every dog worse. bark? I just made it worse. You made it so much worse than it was. I'm like trying to go and tell the kids to be quiet, and I wake up all the dogs. Every dog in the house is now, yep, I'm on it. I'm on it. There are lots of little dogs. Little dogs. Little dogs. We do have a lot of little dogs in there. They're okay. When, they're, when you add them up all together, they make one big dog. They're in no, there's still only half a dog. There's like maybe a quarter of a dog. Tapping this brush up and down just to create these little bushes and space and things. Three and a half hour panty, man. This is what it is. And then also making sure that there's sort of like some growth between these little houses. Mm. It's very helpful. Putting trees and stuff there. So I'm going to get my yellow into that first level of green. 
I'm gonna load it up on the toe and I'm gonna come along the top of my little trees. Isn't it wonderful when it tucks the village in? And every once in a while, John may need to zoom out so you can see well, how was, it does. But... I was just zooming around because you were doing that little detail work between no, the no, trees. No, no, hang with me in the details yeah. for now. And then when we're ready, we'll, we'll go out. I continue to out. add yellow. At the top of some of the flowers, add some of this yellow. Because you got to... I like to make sure that the brush isn't too thickly overloaded because sometimes that can make it too hard to see what we're doing. Just adding some greens, making sure that there's like a little bush here. Bush. Happy little bush. You know the bush is happy. It's well fed. They, they're all there. Loved. Everybody talks nice to it. It's a happy bush. Other bushes are not happy, but these bushes are all super happy. These bushes are just thrilled, thrilled to be here. Now. And it is important to capture highlights from all the plant work. Because what happens when they get catching sun? They get little highlights, right? I'm going to be putting out fluid white paint later. And I'm going to be uh, probably adding out a whole new palette. But I just want to, for a second, go like this. Okay. And I'm going to lighten my green a lot with my fluid white. In my yellow, create a very light value. Mm -hmm. By the way, if you guys have never seen this, this is golden artist colors, titanium white in fluid. There is a lot more pigment and the paint is a lot more flowy. We're like capturing some of these bright, bright highlights with this. See how the greens and all that start to shape out? Yeah. Yeah, they're small and they're distance and, you know, we're doing the work. We're doing the work, guys. Look at that little bush just happened there. It's just happened now, hasn't it? They just appear. And it's nice they create this beautiful layer between the buildings that make them look more, make, makes, it, makes it look more like a living city. Right. And that's your goal. Sometimes you have to paint something more than what it is. I think it's more green because I didn't get to this one yet. And so just a little highlights there. This one's a little more in shadow. Somebody has a sh structured shrub on their front. Somebody does. Somebody put in the put in the effort. So now we have all that going, right? That's pretty fun. That's pretty lovely. Guess what we do next? Quinacridone and add red. I don't know why everybody painted begonias, but they did. Because begonia seems like a good thing. You can absolutely, if you want, change some of this into a different flower or whatever. Mm -hmm.
They could be different colors. They could be different things. They could be different. You they don't know. They could be. They could be. You don't know. Now I'm going to come in and get just some of my pure cad red. You can even add a little yellow into it, but you just want it to be like super bright. Let's tap some of that there. Children sneaking downstairs. Not sure if we're still alive. <laughs> actually, I like it. It's just... It, it, actually, you can't really hear it over this, so it's fine. You can't hear the kids coming and going, so it's not even affecting anything. You know? So it's just, you just take your time and you... Let's zoom out and see how we did. Let's zoom out and see how we've done. Oh, we done. I'm going to sip my good. coffee. I like it. It's a great time to touch up anything that you might want it to have it touched up a bit. Mm -hmm. If you're like looking to refine anything, great time to do it. Zoom in again. Oh, I'm just like creating little zones, I think. A little. Working on my village. You just got to work on your village. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what you're doing. You're like, what, where, you know, how is my village look? Make sure that parts of your village that should be bright are bright. Now, there are village people. They're just out performing some songs right now. <laughs> no village shall ever be inhabited. <laughs> no, the village people are, they just. It's full of Mega Man up in here. They're out performing their songs, They're like YMCA. <laughs> I wonder, you have to wonder if there's a YMCA out there on Lake Como. I am super doubtful, but I don't live there, and I have not vacationed there, so it's I can't possible, be sure. I guess. Huh? It's possible, I guess. Yeah, everything's possible. What are we saying? Like, everything's possible. Okay, I'm going to stop messing with that. If we could have a restroom break, I would appreciate yeah, it greatly. Let's see here. Hold on a second. Do, do. Let me and find that. Uh, we'll come back and we'll finish the water and the flowers, and we will be done. So... Let me see. I just needed a little doo doo doo. Is this the. Okay, there's the music. Oh, look at this. We can do this. Let's go back over here. And. There we go. All right, I'll be right Hold back. Hold on. Hold on. I okay. can do stuff. All right, wait, let me fix my hair. My hair is all crazy. Right back. Thank we can you. Do some stuff and we gonna will be back shortly. Gonna do some stuff. Let me see if this music's playing. I have to find the music. Some music. I've got the music, music in me. I've got, got music, music somewhere. Music in me, huh? I'll find it. I'll find it. I'll let everybody out there. I think it's that right there. There it is. Oh, there's the music. Okay. Baby. I'll see you guys.
Well, that's crazy. <laughs> Hair. Oh, and pink and that's fine. What did you do? Oh my god. <laughs> you don't know. How are you guys doing? Hi, Linda D. How are you doing today? We're gonna put me out where my palette is. John's gonna reset the video. I'm gonna put out some paints. He's got a little resetting to do. So there we go. A little over tucked, I think. You're having a moment. There you go. There we are. So I'm gonna put out some fresh paint, and um, that's really because my paint was starting to get gummy. We've been here for a fairly long session. And this way, my paint's nice and fresh and buttery because good acrylic paint should be like butter. It should be like butter. I'm going to put out some ultramarine blue and phthalo blue as well. Burnt in all the usual colors that you would put out. Also going to have some fluid white because we're going to do the sparkles on water. I like doing sparkles on water. It's not something we've done on the channel before. Um, but it's a really fun technique. I actually, if you want to know, I got inspired. I took some pictures of my kids in a pool and the water was sparkling around them. And I was just like, I've just got to add this to the next painting. Um, Anita Bloom says, can you use a towel instead of a paper towel to wipe your brushes? Absolutely. And you can even wash that towel. It will never come clean again in the acrylic paint per se, but it will be reusable again for a shocking, shocking long amount of time. I can't even tell you how long I've had sad, poor towel. But, and that's ecologically may even be a better choice for you um, when you're painting. Uh, I'm as dry as my son John, whose BD I told you was the six, seven days after you. Hmm. I don't know what that means, but okay and happy birthday to your son. Even if you meant me not well, happy birthday to your son. <laughs> because we wish everybody well regardless. And also we're doing so well. What? What's fun? Oh, just in general, everything. Everything. Everything is funny. Put a little Make black out here. Down. Put a little black out here. All right, so. Now we had pre-recorded this initially, as Linda pointed out, uh, for Saturday, but... For today, because that kind of, there were some technical issues with that file size being so large. I came back this time, really, mm -hmm. I'm going to grab some just red while, while we're doing a thing. Are you getting your stuff still, babe? Oh, yeah. And I'm going to add just a pop of this, like, even brighter red oh, a couple of places. Yeah, just because I like it. Such a nice color. Such a nice color. And also it's fresh. My red building here. That's lovely. Just playing with it. I have the one here and I don't mind showing it. Uh, and you can use your towel over and over again, even after you wash it. See? Over and over. Over and over. I think a lot of people think because when you paint with your towel and it dries, it's like stiff. And it feels like it won't take the paint again, but when you wash it, enough paint comes out and it loosens enough where it's just perpetually useful. Let's work on the water for a little bit. For just a little. For a second. All right, so we're going to get back in and we're going to work on some light, light reflections. I'm going to take just some white into my um, phthalo blue and I'm going to make a light, light reflection. I do This is quite light. And I'm going to come here and with just my number four round, This reflection isn't white, um, but it is a lighter highlight than anything we've put out so far. How are you guys doing today? Are you painting? Are you in your studio? Are you just listening and thinking that you might paint later if you see how hard it is? Notice that I'm just tapping the little brush out here. Making these little marks. These are tiny marks. They're not like big marks. They're little marks. They're far away. Reflections are far, 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 far away. 
I'm still kind of keeping everything horizontal and it's a speck. It doesn't mean like they're straight stiff marks. They're just closer together and shorter. Closer together and shorter. Dun, 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 dun. Just coming here and doing that. I'm here to, I must say, Moderator Cat Red is about it. Have you guys noticed this? She's like, no nonsense. She's, she's like, none of it. None of it. I may put out glazing medium again. I think I want to glaze um, under this. I want to make sure that there's a shadow under this. We want to make sure that these reflections are coming out from all the different colors. Whatever. So say you paint your buildings different colors than I painted mine, which is completely acceptable, by the way. Totally allowable art thing. When we start doing the reflections, think about the colors that you used because the colors that you used should um, be in the water. I'm adding some of these light reflections out here. Uh, with the streaks in the water, what color do you use? Well, right now I just have um, titanium white and thalo blue. So this is ultramarine, thalo blue, cad yellow medium, thalo green, cad red medium, quinacridone magenta, mars black, titanium white. I will put out some fluid white and I will probably put out some glazing medium in a little bit. But everything that is around your water will impact it in color. And that makes it kind of fun. And you can really be playful with that. Let's make sure that we're pulling some of these brighter reflections out this way. Because sunlight is still impacting our water, isn't it? It's still here. It's still impactful. It's still doing its thing. I can always come in and add many, many, many very dark reflections, right? Because there's dark reflections as well. It's just a fuzzy business. Oh, Victoria's like, what is the blue? And then she's like, wait, she got it. Uh, Nancy Julie Steele says, I feel like I'm in Italy safely. Why social distancing? I'm serene now with my tea. You know, I uh, social distancing is an interesting experience because it is, I, I, I oh, it's so isolating. I'm so glad that we do these lives and you guys can chat with each other. But you know what? It also helps me. I think I would be so isolated. Um, and I think it, I, I, I find as I'm talking to people online, uh, to varying degrees, like, you know, it helps if you have a lot of family around you, but if you're in a city where you're on your own or your family's far away, this is a very hard time. So I have to totally suggest and encourage that everyone pays really extra careful attention to how you're feeling and how you're doing because this is so much more stressful than I think we know. I think later they're gonna be like, after studies were conducted on the virus and all that, we discovered people really, really were struggling more than we ever knew. I do, I think they're gonna come back and say it was much harder than we think. You think so? Yeah, I do. I think they're gonna come back and say we were really having a much harder time than we ever, ever knew. I think this time I might I even put some of the extra sparkles out this way. Mm -hmm. Just kind of improve it even. I'm just making sure that some of this highlight color is out here. That makes sense. No. They're this building again. here. A little stronger, right? Reflecting down. See how that works? Little reflection coming out. I will be glazing along this edge, kind of casting a shadow, but right now I'm just trying to 
Lay the reflections in. Paint the reflections in. Sorry about the sudden zoom there. Huh? Just had a sudden zoom. Sudden zoom? It just my just finger. Just suddenly, suddenly zooming was right there for me now. Da -da 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 -da. So just kind of creating that initially. And then what's fun is I'm going to come back and I'm going to get some green. I'm going to get some cad yellow and some thalo green. Cad yellow and thalo green. Mm -hmm. So relax now, says Nancy. Uh, Paul says, yes, it's very isolating. I do like my own time, but this is difficult. Plus, my son is not communicating. Uh, he's in L.A. somewhere. That's intense to have your family mm -hmm. be far away and not be able to reach them and not be able to talk would be just so challenging, so difficult. I'm sending you just love and hugs right now, Paula, because I can't even imagine. I'm, I'm very lucky my mom and I are in touch, even though she's far away. But my dad tends to get out of touch. My dad, is, uh, he's just sort of his own little dude. And, uh, <laughs> you know, he checks in, it's not, but he might not check in for long periods of time. So I've got to sometimes follow his YouTube channel or kind of check to see how he's posting. He's out there in the wilds of Moab, taming the untamed desert, but, you know, on trails that other people have been on. Because you're not allowed to ride on unridden trails in Moab. Yeah? Yeah. When did that happen? I think that's always, like, they have places you can go and places you can't go. And so all the places you can go, they tell you, and all the places you can't go. And you're just trying not to get my dad in trouble right now? No, he's, he knows. He's the one who told me. Yeah, but my dad doesn't do whatever the sign says. Well, that's because There's they... a trail at Pikes okay. Peak now. If you go to Pikes Peak and you're like, man, I really love this trail. There wasn't a trail. It was a closed park. My dad opened that trail. <laughs> I think they closed down that trail. Did they close it back down? <laughs> I think that's what it was. But if it was, it was his fault. <laughs> He doesn't litter. He's actually pretty considerate with what he does. But the thing is, is it's not really what we do each, sometimes as individuals. It's also how we behave collectively. Yeah. Right? We have to remember these are also factors. I'm adding some dark green into my reflections here, guys. And you can start to see that, that the village is, you know, reflecting out. Now let's add some much lighter green. Might even get some white into it. <gasps> so crazy. Very much enjoy this. I do actually really enjoy it. I, I'm actually having a pretty relaxation, relaxing time just sitting here watching This you is a watch. very relaxing painting to do. Mm-hmm. I've got two of them. I got to figure out what to do about that. I can't imagine. I I got an idea. You have an idea. I have an idea. <laughs> to do with the paintings. We Anybody might... need a painting? Patrons, <laughs> we'll talk to you later. Oh goodness. Just build up. They're like dribbles in the house right now. All right. So these, are, this is by no means the only reflection. We need to do lots of colors, right? We need to have lots and lots and lots of colors. Um, it can be nice to take a little of the green into the ultramarine. It makes a very dark color. And it's good to add um, some dark values out here too, guys. Okay, are you getting into packaging? Oh, it's, it's like, what are you doing? Then you mean, oh, I don't think they mind if they hear the chainsaw. I think they, they know we're cutting down trees. Teaching her for free, cutting down trees. This is our life. It happens. My mic just picks up the chainsaw noise so, a little more. Yeah, it has been weird not being at the easel this amount of time. Been weird. Everything's been weird. Very introspective this month, I think. In an introspective time. Introspective. Okay. 
kind of bringing that deep shadow in and Ooh, that's interesting. Mm. So Victoria was saying that last time she went to Pike's Peak, she got altitude sickness. I didn't know you could get that. Mm -hmm. Mm. I mean, I can't, but you can. Interesting. (laughs) You can. Just adding some of that shadow. And then we're casting the shadow because, remember, we've got the water's edge there, and it's going to be doing that a little bit, right? Mm Mm-hmm. Adding some of those shadows into the water. I'm scrolling back up here. Shadows into the water. Ultramarine blue and thalo blue. Thalo blue. So I'm going to send some general art hugs out there to Paula and everybody else out there who's going through a hard time. I think that... uh, just to, just scrolling back through there, seeing mm-hmm. a little bit. Looks like everybody's got a, you, you know, it's a hard time right now. So, if I, if you didn't need the support, then you got some extra. But if you did, you know we're here. So yeah, life is not for the faint of heart, man. And they don't tell you when you start out <laughs> how rough it's gonna be, how challenging it's gonna be. How many chainsaws you're going to (laughs) need? More than one, apparently. All right, now let's pick up some of the colors that are around in our village and start adding them into the water. So one of the great colors is we can add a little yellow and white. That's a great, wonderful color to be adding into the water. A little white to help with the coverage. Um, Victoria C., would it be a little realistic to add a, a little red from the roofs and the reflection? Yes, it would. Everything here is reflective. We have reflections going on. Oh, you found the way? You found the way. That's a little better. Just putting little bits from everywhere around. Mm Mm-hmm. So, would, uh, Victoria was asking, would it be realistic to oh, add... Oh, I just answered that. Oh, okay. I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> and Linda's like, it would! So if my dad is watching, sometimes he watches and he doesn't listen. Love you, Dad! He's not... I, I can follow him on the Life 360 app, so it's very helpful. See him riding through the desert. Right. On a bike. With now no we have name. reflected some of the yellow. All right, we've got some of the white kind of coming out here and there where it would be. So let's add some of the orange. Got that building up there, right? So we're just going to put a little of it in the water. Oh, yeah. It kind of makes the scene. Makes balance. the scene. Gives it mm-hmm. balance. It mm-hmm. brings balance to the force, as one would say. Mm-hmm. I see how that just comes out mm-hmm. and it's like happening there. I like all the colors being intermingled. Then I'm going to get stronger into my red a couple places. Stronger red, you say? Mm-hmm. Now we have that wonderful, wonderful bit of hit happening. I'm going to put out a little of my yellow ochre. Yep. 
We're almost there on that. And then we've Whoa. got sparkle and leaves. You want to go see if thump. they're okay? I'm going to go see a thump what that was. Okay. Let's see if they're okay because that was big. It, it feels like it was probably, I think it's most likely it's an outside tree thump. Just saying with everything that's going on. I'm going to make a very light reflection. Was it us or was it them? Us or them? Huh? I said I have to put my mic on so everybody can hear me answer. Oh, okay. Tree fall down and go boom. <laughs> tree fall down and go boom. <laughs> Big Did tree. it fall down and go boom? Big bada boom. Big bada boom. Big bada boom. Big. Big. Bada boom. <laughs> bada boom. Chicken good. So, the tree fell down. They are chopping the tree. <laughs> like a couple aggressive. people were like, <laughs> they like, okay. So that's two references this show. If you have been following, dun dun dun. Why would anyone follow that? It's so crazy. I don't All right, know. so we're gonna put out our fluid white. Yes, we are, and we're going to create some really dramatic sparkling reflections. So let's start out by loading that fluid wet on the tip of our brush. All right, I'm gonna go over there. I'm gonna zoom in on your sparklies. We're getting too close. So this Captain. is a bit like dashes and dots. Is that a game, dashes and dots? It is in this painting, especially in the background, right? And as we move it forward, Anita Bloom says you can blend with any brush. You can blend with anything, pretty much. I blended with sponges and paper towels and saran wrap and my fingers. And there's a lot of ways to blend. There's not just one way to blend. Blending is just uh, getting two colors to, in some way, optically come together. Create half tones or middle tones, you know, when you're blending. And you make that sound so easy. It is easy. The whole premise of my channel, dude. <laughs> <gasps> Coffee time. There it is. It's co I you know what, man? This may be exactly what the other one is. It may even be a little longer because we were chatty. Well But I, we haven't had a really long one in the channel in a what really long is, time. Yeah. You're, yeah, you're definitely going to come in under the other one because I think it was three hours and 45 minutes and we're at three hours six now. So, flowers still. Flowers. Yeah, but you have an hour of flowers? No. I don't know. Sparkles are pretty involved. Okay. I know. I'm just wondering what the purpose of all of this is right now. I'm just trying to pay my reflections while you're playing this weird game, John. I, was, I don't know what this game is. I was and trying, I'm just trying to, let, to pay reflections. I was trying to let Cinnamon know that I got the mic adjusted so that they, you guys can't hear all the noise outside, and it's it's okay. So she was like, I was whispering to her because you guys can't hear me whisper when I'm away from my, my mic. So she was like. I don't understand why you're whispering all of this to me. As you can see, as we come forward, these reflections become stronger. We're creating a little corridor of light. And then when we come in and we add some um, little sparkly reflections, that'll be really wonderful. Because that will help us. 
with that feeling of it being a very bright day. There already you can see when John zooms out, I'll keep, I'll keep here. So do you guys love this where you can really see it? And then we've got Zoom and everything back again. I'm pretty excited that we have it. Wow, thank you so much, Ramya. I really appreciate that. Oh, wow. And I very much like your pair. Thank That's you. Thank you. John travels enough to be able to know what's going on, but I do not. I uh... Ooh, you could put a secret message in with course code using dashes and dots. Now, see, that's some fine art thinking there. So, Amy, that is fine art thinking. When an artist is sitting there painting landscape and goes, but make a message with dashes and dots. Boom, fine art. So, yeah, that's, those were rubies. Hmm? Those were rubies from yeah, India. I knew you'd know that. That's the rupee symbol. Rupees. I like rupees. It reminds me of Zelda. I have to tell you, man, I, I just like everybody who's nice. Like, I don't care where they're from. You know, I don't care what they're doing. I just, if you're a nice person, I like you. We're good. We're cool. I want you to be happy and your family to be okay. You know, I'm just, I'm just good. And, but I, I haven't gotten to go all the places I'd like to go. So sometimes... You know, I, I get that kind of murking, not, I've traveled a bit, but not like John. John's traveled like a lot. Yep. No, I would say I traveled a bit, but as compared to folks that I know who traveled a lot. I'd like to travel a lot someday. I'm going to go Korea for sure. Mm, yes. If, if Korea will have me. I don't know if Korea will have me. <laughs> I'm sure, <laughs> just, I'm sure they'll have you. Just making an assumption I can go there too. Like, it'll be cool. They won't mind. It's fine. I'm just going to go there. <laughs> All right, look at us go. We've got this little thing here. While this is having a dry, let's start putting in our flowers. We could dry it and then then twinkle, but we might as well just start our flowers. Just yeah, I get mean, them in there. Why not? Like yeah. we're doing it. My chair keeps rolling back, and then I scoot forward, <laughs> and then my chair rolls back, and I scoot forward. It's kind of a game now. I, I'm, I'm gonna put a little rug underneath you or something. Yeah, I mean, he's like, nice people rock. I can creep. We need more of those nice people around the planet. And we need to put less of the suck people in charge. Mm -hmm. So more nice people. Everybody bees nice, right? Everybody's bees nice. That's no, right. But here's the truth. Nobody listens to me. So I went, no, nobody holds your breath. Look, as, as that's my say, thing. Everybody be nice. Stay cool, honey bunny. Stay cool, honey bunny. Everybody be nice. It's not that hard. Maybe it is hard, but it shouldn't be hard. I'm going to use my round brush here and make some leaves. John, have you been to Thailand? I've heard it is gorgeous. Okay, so no, I have not been to Thailand, but many of my friends either are from Thailand or have been to Thailand, and they say it is a very good place to go visit, especially during the, the, the high tourism season. And the reason for that is that during the high tourism season, there's a lot of really good things for you to do. Whereas if you go in off season, they don't really have as many cool things for you to do. So while that does sound kind of weird, the tourism season is a good time to go to Thailand because they have a lot of cool things. Here, we'll go and we'll let you know. How about we Spe travel specifically and we'll tell you who's nice. <laughs> mm, yes. Like for real, who's nice and uh, also like where's fun to go. That's what we should do. We'll go and we'll tell you how it is. Mm -hmm. I would like to do that though. I'm not even kidding. I would like to do that. I'm going to go see Kia's, and I would like to go to Thailand and see the floating market, and I would like to go to Korea and stalk all my favorite Korean rom-com stars and also tour some Korean filming sets. So I believe that I am an island person. Like, I think I'm the kind of person who would do really, really well living on an island because you get to know all the other people around you and you get used to their weirdness and anybody else who comes in is an outsider and they get pushed off the island. You just have to get integrated so you don't get pushed off all the island. I'm creating a textural effect of leaves. These are the kind of undergrowth. We're gonna build leaves up from here, but these were just nice to like begin that feeling of leaves while John talks about being an island person. Oh, so I don't know if you guys know this, there's this channel, Fully Raw Christina. 
And uh, I stalk this channel thinking, yeah, I'm going to do it. And then I don't do it. But I stalk it a lot. And and now I'm weirdly informed on her life. Mm -hmm. She was from Houston, too. Guess what? She moved to Hawaii. Which would, you know what? For a completely raw through, vegan channel, I felt like that was a good choice. Thinking this all through, maybe we went the wrong way. <laughs> maybe no. the island was the way. But you know what? Hawaii is super expensive. Relative. It is. And... They don't have snow there. Think about all the snow we're going to get here in Pennsylvania. And everyone's, <laughs> everyone's not laughing from Pennsylvania going, no, you don't, you don't understand. It's real snow. For real, real, for real. Like real, real snow, guys. Like it's not pretend stuff. So I add yellow to this mix. I took phthalo green and burnt sienna. I'm adding a little cad yellow and I'm doing that tap pool stroke, kind of layering in some dark colored leaves and some slightly lighter, but still yet dark colored leaves. This is just to create some density for mm. my leaves. Now I do have to dry everything and then I'm going to show you how to sparkle it up. Uh, I have done raw for health reasons. It is very hard. Yeah, it looks hard. See, here's the thing with Christina. If you've never seen this fully raw, Christina. Okay, first of all, let me set the stage. Um, she is like the picture of vitality and health. I think only Frisian horses <laughs> have hair <laughs> that's on par with this girl. And it's not like, I've seen it in person. It's not like cosmetically like that long. Like it is like thick Blowing cascades, waterfalls of what is clearly healthy from root to tip hair, and her skin is a glow, a glow, a glow, a glow, a glow. Everything about her emanates this radiance of health. I don't know if she's a nice person or not. She was nice to me when I met her. She was nice to everybody I saw her engage yeah. with, but it was a very short interaction. So for at least 20, 30 minutes at a stretch, she can be would, a very nice person, but I assume she's nice. I would put her in the nice Bucket. I think nice. Yep. I nice think bucket. nice. It, she seems nice to me. Very little drama. I mean, there was like a, there's a little food op drama around her, but it didn't seem to be her fault. And she seems to handle things in a very kind way. And she speaks to people very kindly. And so I was about it. But anyways, just the cascading. And then you go to her channel and there's like these thumbnails. And she's like, what I had for lunch. And it's this gorgeous, colorful, like bucket of, I don't know, fruits and veg. <laughs> and bucket of it and she's got like this thing this gallon of dressing and this is my perfect dressing and you're like what is that dressing and then you just think to yourself i'm gonna do it and then that dressing i'm gonna try this <laughs> this fully raw dressing looks better than like <laughs> the stuff that i'm having and it's not fully raw so i'm like maybe she's got a point we should just try that out that would probably be better so we're gonna try that out and see if we can find some stuff that we might like Oh yeah, don't use heat. It causes um, like color shift and all sorts of other things with your paint. It's not not good, so it's better just to use it on the lowest heat setting and uh, dry your paint that way. Make sure it's thoroughly dry. That way you're not gonna drag any paint from lower layers onto your upper layers because you know you don't want your sparkles to smear or any of that kind of stuff. And you know she's really. She's really pretty close on this one. I mean, I'm going to see if I can... Let's see here. See, there it is. I'm going to grab this. Bring it over here. You can see. There's the... Hold on. There you go. Okay. So I just so dropped chatting and chatting while I was muted. That's where, you're, that's where we're going. See, there's the... Or, and this is where we're at. Okay, what, what do you mean? Uh, See, this is you, where we're going on the screen. Okay. And this is where we're at. I don't know what you... This is where we're going. Oh! <laughs> and this is where we're at. <laughs> Just, I don't know what I want that. Now I have to fix things. Darn it! I can don't I can, compare this late in the game. I wasn't I trying go to be comparative. Just, I was just, just showing it. it up there for you. Darn I, it! <laughs> I was trying to be helpful. Not helpful. <laughs> Not helpful. <laughs> She's like, I want more now here and there. So, um, <laughs> turn it, you. I thought that was kind of cool that I could see the difference. <laughs> turn it. <laughs> Nanny thinks it's cool, too. She sent those Canadian <laughs> doulars. I love Canadian doulars. 
I love Canadians. I, I love like everybody. Again, I love everybody nice. They help Thank make you, sure we... Nancy. So, yeah, what's the best? So, if you're asking what's the best digital program, uh, Rose Bloom, it's Procreate. Um, what digital channel should you check out? You've got to check out Bobby Chu, and you've got to check out uh, Fajita Goro. Mm -hmm. Those two, for sure, amazing, 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 amazing. Can I say that again? You can say amazing. it. Amazing. So, I'm going to take, uh, I think I can do it with this brush. Um, well, mm. I might try to do it with this one. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and just treat myself to a smaller brush. This is a number one art sherp around. And I'm going to make little radial kind of reflections. Um, you want some of them to be small, smaller than others. You want some of them to be small. You want some of them to be kind of big. So it's it's really helpful to be able to turn. Let me move over there. Shh, shh. Turn the wheel now. So you're just trying to create these little refractions of light that are starring out. Uh, some of them will be you know, more extreme. Oh, hold on. I think your mic may have uh, died. So hold on a second. I'm going to get cinnamon some new batteries. Everyone hold on just a second. Okay, it's still not working. Hold on. Oh, your your mic's not picking up. Hold on a second. It says it's there. Let me go over and hit your button. Maybe I muted you. Hold on. No, your mic's still not on. I'm gonna check it one more time. Hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring this my mic. I'm gonna wear my mic over here, and I'm gonna say, okay, guys. So I'm over here checking her mic. For some reason, it just cut off on us, and I'm uh, a little she's making a little trail of spike sparkles over there. You guys, you see them? She's she's working on. It. I'm fixing her mic while we're looking at this, and it's oh, it says audio mute. Are you there? Yeah, it's still not picking you up. Yeah, for There's something at the ear. Check the ear. Oh, there it goes. Is there? It's there again. Now. It's there again. For some it's reason, there it, again. It got a little unplugged. That's what happened. It got unplugged. Oh, so, sorry. I don't sorry, need sorry, that here. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. It's okay. I don't want it. I really okay. don't. It's okay. All right. Disheveled, but still here. I got to go over and turn the camera. They but can't still. see you yet. But that's oh. probably a good thing because I'm disheveled, but still here. We're working it out. Disheveled, but still here. There we go. There you are. Here I am. Here you I appear. Am. Ooh, I have coffee.
Then just add little bits of sparkle where something is like got a flare at you. Mm. It's important to do. I like to do it. Making little sparkles. This is how you add sparkle to the water. It's really great when you paint a pool. Yeah? Yeah. Hmm. I've never painted a pool. Make sure that some of these are bigger. Some are smaller because sparkles vary. Mm. We don't all sparkle in the same way. No, we need sparkle diversity. Everybody sparkles in a different way. So I was reading, uh, I have a friend, Art Thomas, and he got a big write-up in an L.A. I don't know, actor's thing. Mm -hmm. And it had some of his life story in there. And I got to tell you, it was really inspiring. And I have, I'm, I'm, you know, I've always thought Art had an amazing, bright spirit and tremendous tenacity just to overcome challenges. But reading the stuff he went through as a kid, mm -hmm. like, was humbling. Just humbling. I'm continuing to add sparkles to the water. These are the little stars. And you can see is that they're going to come down. They will be a couple of other places, right? They will, they will sparkle out a little. Where are you going? He's so curious, and then I get curious. Oh, thank you, Anita. Uh, Michelle Brand says, it's almost as if folks say, did you check the plugs? <laughs> Linda's like, I would use luminescent paints on the sparkles, and you could do that. You could even use some Chroma Shine or Chroma Pearl. so dig what these guys are doing out there is it just fun it's really good i mean it we have a you know 100 year old plus house that has had many years of mm, not badly conceived but probably uninformed landscaping and so we have a big well, and also mixture. some of these trees are very old and they have come to the end of their life cycle that's that's true we have to we have to Get them fixed up. So that's what they're doing. I'll have to live stream from the bottom of that one tree. And then you like that. Oh, yeah. You guys would be like tripping out. All right. What do you think of our sparkles? Let's zoom out. How do we sparkle today? I think we probably need a couple more around here. Just trying to make sure that we've got a little bit of a balance. I don't know. Oh, I like it. Okay. Ah, I think I need one here. It's like so weird. I look at it. I'm like, ah, now that I put it there, I got to put you here. <laughs> Needs more sparkle. Well, there comes a point where it does, doesn't it? <laughs> I dig this a lot. Little Lake Como enjoyment. Mm -hmm. Back to the flowers, though. Those are fun. So the flowers are a really fun kit. I'm going to take my uh, quinacridone red into my magenta. And I'll come back here. And you may need to get some white into it. You don't want to make it too light, though. And these are like sort of like little distant blooms. When 
when I come forward like to this big guy right here, I'm going to pull a, let's get a little white in there so that the, you want it to still be pretty dark in its color, but you, you want room to highlight it. I'm going to make a leaf. And you'll notice that I kind of curve those strokes inwards. Mm -hmm. And I may take advantage of the circular nature of my palette right now. To help me get a nice round aspect. I find that this is one of the nice benefits. If I've got to paint flat, uh, Lazy Susan lets me do a lot. Hot. Okay, so I'm going to do another little, like a little flower right here. Maybe a little more into there. A little flower right here. And remember, you know, petals are kind of like, with the exception of a few highly structural plants, they have a lot of personality. So, you know, try not to take all the personality away from your flowers. I think sometimes what happens is, People get so busy painting a perfect flower that they forget how creative and, and wild most flowers actually are. I'm going to pull a little bit of that stem down this way. Maybe that one comes off a bit. There we go. Just something... Now there'll be leaves over the top. I'll go ahead and get some extra white on here. And this petal, can be kind of forward rolled. Little highlights there. I'm gonna come on to the middle of each petal and sort of create a little highlight at the center of the petals. Yeah, I'm stroking out. I'm leaving shadow there and shadow there, and we're just pulling some little highlights in. Always leave a like if you. When you put your highlight pink in, if you leave some of your shadow, it will create depth to your flower before you even depth your flower. Before you add depth to your flower, make a plan. You'll want a plan. And it should involve turnips. The same. Hmm. <laughs> Cunning use of turnips. Just add a little highlights to the leaves where I can. Let that have a dry for a second. Where it thinks about what it's done. Sometimes you just have to let your painting think about what it's done. Yep. So I'm going to grab a little of my lighter green. This will be my phthalo green and my cad yellow. And I'm going to make some lighter leaves. And it's okay if they sort of layer over some of the flowers that we have, because that helps push them in, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. I'll go ahead and a little green to that. And maybe I'm going to take a little of my yellow and green together. Just adding some structural line. Not every leaf, just some of the leaves. I also am going to come in and a little yellow, a little green, a little white. A 
Tell them that. That's a lot of personality, doesn't it? The greenery. The little texture bits. A little more white into the pink. And let's come on the toe of the brush, and the outside of the petals. And let's outline each of the petals. And a bright highlight on the petals here. See how it's like a sun reflection. Ain't those fun? Mm-hmm. Wow, that's really coming together. Just enjoyable. A little reflection right here. Just adding the little bits of reflections. I believe we did this live. Just when you think you're used to what we'll do, we change it up. Really neat. Isn't that fun? Yeah. Now, it's very helpful to come in the center. I'm going to take a little of my ultramarine and my magenta, and you'll notice that makes a very nice purple mm -hmm. in the center of this flower. A little bit right there. Maybe not necessarily there. But that gives us a bit of a... A shadow that we can work with. Hmm. It says that this flower could be deep. It has, it has it has depth. Flower has depth. Like to just mix things up a bit. Okay, for the next bit, you will need to dry it, but we're almost, almost done. Mm. Wrong mute button. Do, do, do. So, man, this is, I'll, I'll check, make sure that she goes over her brushes here in just a minute. But this is really looking good. I'm very, very happy. And man, it's been really nice hanging out with you guys today. It's been a wonderful afternoon. We get to hang out. So we did the thing. We did it. We did it. Now what's pretty what, much exactly the same time as what it was before. Yep. What brush are you using there? I'm using a number four round. Mm. All the brushes are listed in the description down below. There's a little orange in the center. Have a nice little little pick me up little thing. <laughs> Rinse out. Yeah. I'm gonna take a little bit of yellow and white. <laughs> I'm tapping up and down, create that dotting.
Isn't that lovely? Put a little cat red if you need to for shading. Mm -hmm. Get those centers. That's so I think we did it. Yeah. Mm hmm Oh my goodness, we did Ooh, it. We wow. did it. We that painted up painted. That turned out really good. All right. That's it. That is amazing. That is how you do it. You can spend more time with it. You can sparkle more. You can piece more. You can anything. But this is the steps and process of creating this lake. Como village scene. Mm -hmm. um, nothing you guys inspire what I paint and create. So if you have suggestions or ideas of things that you'd like me to paint, be sure to write support at theartsherpa.com with your ideas. If we get enough requests, we'll do it. If you check the calendar on the Art Sherpa website, www.theartsherpa.com. Wrong button. There you go. There you are. <laughs> I don't know. Comparatively, I think it's pretty good. I think it looks great. So if you go to theartsherpa.com, and you go to the calendar, you can see through the first weekend of October, everything we're painting for Watercolor Wednesday, for Fun Friday, or Super Up Saturday, which ended up being <laughs> Terrific Tuesday. Isn't that nice? That is nice. Yeah, it worked out really well. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. If you're into free art education, it's the only reason I would suggest it to you. If you mm -hmm. like free art education and you'd like to do a live stream paint along, it's a good idea to subscribe. Hit the bell. Definitely give us a thumbs up. Tell me what you thought of the video. Always feel good about giving us feedback, what you liked about the sound, video features, format, all of that stuff, because you never know. You might really help us shape our show, and the show is for you guys to be learning at home, so that feedback is very important to us. Be sure to come by and check out Watercolor Wednesday on Facebook, mm -hmm. our new series every Wednesday evening on Facebook from my page. I do a step-by-step -step watercolor lesson, and the next one is a butterfly and flowers. I'm pretty excited. This weekend coming up, we're going to be doing some really gorgeous butterflies. It's going to be pretty much just like this. Be good to yourself. It is an important time for self-care, my friends. It is really, really important for self-care. Be good to each other. And I want to see you at an easel really soon. Bye-bye.